So you wanna learn how to build your own e-commerce website so you can start to sell products online? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this website step by step. This sleek and modern design, it's fully customizable to match your brand and create any type of store. We're gonna be using free tools that allow you to build your own website and online store with ease and faster than you would imagine. By the end of this video, you'll have a complete online store ready to receive payments and start making sales today. All right, friends, let's go ahead and get started with step number one, which is to get your very own custom domain name and web hosting. A domain name is just the address to your website. It's what people will enter into the search bar to find your site. So something like yourwebsite.com. And web hosting is just renting space on a server somewhere that's connected to the internet so that you can store all of your media and files on your website. There are web hosting companies that have buildings full of these servers and they offer you 24 seven support in case anything happens to your website. If you want your own website and to have a custom domain name for it, then you have to purchase your own web hosting, which I'm gonna show you how to do in this tutorial. And I'm also gonna give you a massive discount code for it. Now, yes, you can get a free website, but it comes with a lot of limitations. Like you won't own your domain name. It'll be something like yourwebsite.wix.com or squarespace.com or whoever's hosting the website. Or it might even be a random string of numbers and letters that you don't even get to choose. You also cannot upload new themes in order to customize your website exactly the way you want. You can't upload plugins to increase the functionality of your website. You can't monetize your website with ads in order to make money from it. And your website could be deleted at any time because you don't technically own it. So for these reasons, I recommend web hosting because it places you in control. So in order to get your domain and hosting, just click on the very first link in the description, or you can go to creativeprowebsite.com slash hostinger. And it'll take you to a page that looks like this. Now this is my co-branded landing page that I have with hostinger.com. So let's go ahead and scroll on down here and we've got the three different plans that you can choose from for your hosting. So we've got the single shared hosting, the premium and the business shared hosting. Now the premium shared hosting plan is the one that you're gonna hear me recommend all the time here on the channel. You're gonna get 76% off and for that 76% off, you're getting 100 websites that you can have under the same account. You're getting free emails and so this could be, you know, Levi at yourdomain.com. We've also got an unlimited free SSL certificate. And so the SSL is the encryption for your website. So that's also a big deal that they're giving that to you for free. And then we also have a free domain name. Now, if you guys remember at the beginning of the video, I was telling you, we have to purchase a domain name as well as a hosting plan. And so the fact that we can purchase a hosting plan and we get a domain name for free, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the premium shared hosting plan. All right, and now here we're gonna choose the period. And so you can choose if you wanna be charged every month, every 12 months, 24 months, or every 48 months. Now, keep in mind that your domain name registration, that the one that we're getting for free, is gonna be one per year. So it's every 12 months. So you guys can always select whatever you want, but I always recommend the 12 month just so that they both line up perfectly. And you can see that you're saving $114 here. So this is pretty awesome. And then on top of that, you're still getting the free domain name. So pretty sweet. So now I'm gonna scroll on down here and I get to create my account with Hostinger. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my credit card information and then enter in my email address here. Also, you wanna make sure that you're using my coupon code right here, which is create a pro website. So if you went to the link that's in the description or you know, creativeprowebsite.com slash Hostinger, that's what's giving you that giant 78% off discount. Your final total is only $35 for your website and you're getting $150 value. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my credit card information and I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, and so now that we filled out our payment information, we're gonna be redirected to the control panel. All right, so next I'm gonna click on start now. And then it's gonna ask who I'm creating this website for. I'm just gonna click on skip right here. Feel free to answer these questions as you want, but I'm just gonna skip the whole thing. So let's close out of that and click on skip. And now it's gonna ask if we wanna build a website or migrate a website. And so I'm gonna be building the site from scratch, obviously. So let's click on select here. And now we get to select a platform. We can choose a different CMS, which is a content management system, but I'm gonna be using WordPress right here. Let's go ahead and click on select. And then it's gonna ask me to create my WordPress account. And then also, do I wish to add WooCommerce? Now this is a big deal. WooCommerce is the plugin to WordPress that we're gonna be using to sell products on your website. This plugin basically transforms your website from a regular website to an e-commerce website. And so if you click on this check button, Hostinger is saving you a ton of time by trying to download all of those extra plugins and things like that. It's just gonna download it for you along with a fresh version of WordPress in the background. And we haven't even signed up for our domain name yet. So pretty cool how they do this with a one click install. So again, all I did was I just clicked on the checkbox right here and then I have my administrator email and let me create my password. And so this is basically how I log into my WordPress account every single time. So let's go ahead and click right here and I'm gonna go ahead and create my own password. 
All right, and so now it's gonna ask if we want any templates or themes or anything like that. I'm gonna say skip, I don't need a template because I'm gonna show you guys how to download your own template while you're inside of your website, as well as downloading a theme and setting up uh, WooCommerce and everything else. So let's just skip it. And now that WordPress is downloading in the background, all we had to do was say yes, download it for me. We can go over here to the left-hand side and claim our free domain name right here. And you can see it says free, it's letting you know, hey, select me right here. So let's click on select right here because this is the free domain name that we have included with the premium hosting plan if you follow along with me. Okay, so now right here we can try and search as many domain names as we want and then we can click on this little box right here and choose the dot whatever behind it. So if you want dot com, dot net, dot click, all of this stuff here. And you can see that there's a ton of them. So I'm gonna select dot com and that's the one that I would recommend you go for as well. Of course you can choose whatever you want but uh, when it comes to people searching for your website and the most professional looking, it's usually a .com. And so I just recommend trying to get this one if you can. Okay, so now you can try out a whole bunch of different domains to see if anything's available. I'm gonna try Levi's products and then I'll click on search to see if it's available. Perfect, the domain name is available. Now, if it wasn't available, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of options down below to try and change it from levisproducts.com. It'll say something like, well, hey, this one's taken, so maybe levisproducts.net or .org or .whatever. Again, I'd recommend trying to get a .com, but uh, you guys can do what you want, of course. So now that I know that my domain name is available and I have a .com, I'm gonna move over to continue. And then it's gonna ask if I wanna finish setting up, and so I'm just gonna say, yes, finish setup. Okay, and then after I finish setup, it's gonna go ahead and redirect me to my H panel. It's gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll see you guys in just a minute. You can see that it's kind of initializing setup here, so. All right, so now you can see that all the initialization is ready to go, and we can click on edit our website and go straight to the WordPress dashboard, or we can go over here to the control panel under Hostinger. So WordPress is the CMS that's gonna be handling all of our information for our website. This is the back end of our website where we can see all of the name servers, the SSL, and all of that stuff. Now I know that sounds like a whole bunch of gibberish and you don't need to know how to do any of that because hosting is taking care of it for you, but there's one thing that we have to do in the control panel. So we're gonna knock this out first and then we'll go and edit our website. So this is important. Make sure you click on this, right click on it and say open on a new tab. And if you didn't do that, that's okay. I'll show you guys how to get to WordPress a different way when you're inside the control panel, but I'm keeping this open on another tab so that as soon as we're done making our changes here, I can just go straight over here and click on edit website. It's two ways of going to the same place. Okay, so we opened the control panel up on a new tab. I'm gonna click on dashboard right here. And from here, you'll see the SSL certificate, which again, this is the encryption for your website. Oh, it moved around. And so here's the SSL certificate for your website. And you'll see that ensure your website is uh, encrypted right here. So I'm gonna click on install. And it's gonna ask, do you wanna install it to the domain name that you just purchased? And I'm gonna say, yes, install it. Perfect, and just like that, our SSL is gonna be downloaded in the background and installed. So we don't have to do anything. All we had to do was just say, yes, go ahead and do it. Okay, so now that we're done with our back end of Hostinger, we can move into WordPress and it's really simple. All you have to do is click on edit website right here, or you can click on edit website right here. Two of the same thing. I'll actually just close out of that tab and I'll just click on edit website right here from my Hostinger background. So we'll click right here and it's automatically gonna segue you right into your WordPress dashboard. That's pretty sweet. Okay, now before we move on to this next step, I wanna go over one last thing over the WordPress dashboard. So we're gonna set up your site title and description. And this is really important because if I go to a new tab really quickly and search for Hostinger, I wanna show you that this right here is the site title and then this is the site description right here. So what I'm about to show you how to do is setting up these two right here. So when people search for Levi's products, right here in the search bar, and they don't actually go to levisproducts.com, what they'll see first is the site title, and then they'll see the site description. So we're gonna set that up right now, and we're gonna go down to the settings tab right here, and then just click on general. But I'm gonna open it up on a new tab, because I do that all the time. And we can close out of our hosting or H panel now. And you'll notice I open things on a new tab all of the time, because personally, I just like being able to go back to a clean dashboard whenever I want. Okay, so now you'll notice that it's asking me to log in. And again, this is just the username and password that we set up earlier on when we were setting up our, our hosting account with Hostinger. And so I'm gonna enter in that password again. And now we are logged into the website. And it shouldn't ask me to log in anymore. It's just because I'm moving from Hostinger to my WordPress dashboard. It just wants to confirm who I am. So now we've gone to the settings tab and we clicked on general. And so that was from the dashboard. Again, we'll go over and hover over settings and I clicked on general. And so I opened it on a new tab. 
And right here, we've got the site title and the tagline, which the tagline is the site description. It's the same thing. It's that little mini paragraph right below it. So right now, someone is just going to see levisproducts.com and then just another WordPress website. So here, if you wanted to, you could change this to something like... Something like this, you know, Levi's products, the place to look for all of your grooming needs or grooming product needs or whatever. And then the site tagline could be some kind of a description or description where I mention, you know, what my site is about in just a few words. I'm going to leave the tagline just the way it is because I just wanted to show you guys this is where you would do it. And when you're done making your changes, you just click on save changes. Okay. So now I'm just going to go back to the dashboard, which I can do by just closing out of this tab or just clicking on dashboard just like that. All right, guys, we have successfully set up our domain name as well as our hosting plan, and we were fluently pushed right into our WordPress dashboard, and that's just all thanks to hosting or just being a very streamlined system. And so now that we're here and we're done, we can move on to step number two, which is to install Starter Templates plugin. We can do that by going over to the Plugins tab right here and then clicking on Add New, and we're essentially opening up the same thing for your website as the App Store on your phone. And so we're basically just going to look through all of the plugins that WordPress has to offer, and then we can choose whatever we want. Now, another plugin that we automatically installed while we were doing our domain and everything with Hostinger was WooCommerce. And if you'll notice, it's right here. And so it just flawlessly integrates WooCommerce into WordPress as you're downloading everything in the background, so you're not even having to do anything. And it's not like it saves you that much time, but it's pretty cool that they're thinking ahead of all the things that you're going to need. So if I were to go over here to the Plugins tab, I can click on Add New. And I'm going to open it up on a new tab the same way that I always do. And then if we were to install WooCommerce, you would come over here and then search for WooCommerce. And then you'll see that it's already installed and active, so we can't even click on the button right here. So that's pretty cool that they do that automatically. The next one that we're actually going to do, though, is called Starter Templates. So after searching for it in the search bar right here, you'll see that the first one is Starter Templates for Elementor, WordPress, and Beaver Builder. This is the one we're going to be using, so I'm going to click on Install Now and Activate. All right, and upon doing so, it's going to bring us back to the same plugins page right here. And so this is installed plugins rather than add new. So this is just a list of all of the plugins that we have installed on our website. So now we're going to go down to starter templates right here and then click on see library. Now, if you're not looking at this page and then uh, your computer didn't automatically bring you here and you're still on your WordPress dashboard, just go over to the plugins tab and clicked on installed plugins. And then you can scroll on down and you'll see starter templates right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. All right, so I'm going to click Build My Website Now. And then of these three page builders, we're going to be using Elementor, which in my opinion is the best page builder that you could ever, ever hope to use. So we're going to click on this one. Okay, so now we're inside of Starter Templates. And Starter Templates is just that. It's a bunch of templates that you can use to get started. So you can see that they have a ton of different templates here that I can choose from, these categories here. We're going to be going to the e-commerce tab because we're going to be building an e-commerce website, something that I can sell products on. And so again, you can also search up here, but if I click on e-commerce, it's gonna put e-commerce <laughs> into the search bar. So it makes it pretty easy. Uh, but again, if I clicked on online shop, it would put that in there as well. Okay, so now that I've got e-commerce selected, I'm gonna scroll through here and then you can see that they have tons and tons of different templates that you can choose from. All of these are e-commerce stores. You can always just click on one like this. This is a premium one, so you'd actually have to pay to use this one, but don't worry. I'm not over here recommending a paid service because as long as it doesn't have this premium little icon right here, like this one, or this one for instance, you can click on it and this is free to download. You don't have to pay any money to use this. And so you get a preview of the website over here on the right hand side. And so you can scroll through the whole thing and it's interactable. You can completely you know, interact with this entire website here. So I could be on the home page, and then maybe I wanna to go to the men's category and it'll show me the men's store. And so you can see all the cool color swatches here, all the products and everything. Maybe I want to go to the about page or the contact page or something like that. So you can see that you can always take a look at the entire website. I'm going to click on this X button to go back. You can look at the entire website before you decide to download it is essentially what I'm getting at. So after scrolling through all these templates, I think this one looks really cool. So I'm going to click on it. It's called the cycle shop if you want to search for it. And so as we scroll through, I mean, I think this site just looks absolutely beautiful and just really cool. I love the dark tones and I love this red and black look. I'm probably not going to keep this dichotomy here. I'm probably going to swap it out to just one solid color, but I think it looks really cool. My favorite part is this right here. As you scroll, the image kind of fades into blackness and it just kind of keeps changing. And I think that's just the coolest little product summary page right here. And then we scroll on through and I think the site just looks great. So this is the one that we're going to download. 
And when I say we're downloading this template, I mean when I click skip and continue and I download this entire template, we get this exact replica of a website. And so it's, it's pretty sweet. So over here on the left-hand side, they're asking if you already have a logo built and if you want to install it right now before you even you know, install the template because then by the time it gets onto your computer, it's already going to have your logo up here. But I'm going to show you guys in a later step how to build your own logo and how to do it for free, completely for free. No paid software or anything like that. If you don't have a logo, that's fine because I don't have one ready either So, because I'm going to build it with you. So we're going to go ahead and skip this step right here. So skip and continue. And then they're going to ask if we want to change the colors and fonts. And so right here, we've got the colors. Watch this. I can choose what color I want for my website, and it's going to change it to purple now. See this button and this red over here? And then if I want it to be yellow, so now it's yellow, blue, however I want to do this here. I'm just going to leave it on the default colors for now, because I'm going to show you guys later on how you can change this to whatever color you want, not just these colors that they have right here. Um, and also how you can, in the future, change the colors if you update your company or do something different. So we'll get along to that later. I'm just going to select the default colors. And then I've got the fonts as well. So right now it's using the default. It's like this racing font with monster out or whatever. And so I could click on this one, and you'll see that the fonts change as I choose these different ones. And so I can kind of pick which ones I think look really cool. This one's actually not bad, this open sans and work sans. I kind of like how just straightforward and streamlined it looks. It's just very minimalistic. But I'll stick to the racing one, the default that comes with the template for now, because I think it looks really cool. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to click on continue. And it says, all right, just one last step. Tell us a little bit about yourself, which I'm just not even going to fill out. And then down below, we've got the advanced options. Make sure you leave every single box checked, except for this one if you don't want to, the share non-sensitive data. If you don't want to use this one, you don't have to. I always just uncheck it. But everything else we need, they're going to install everything for you. And all you have to do is click on one button. So let's do it. Submit and build my website. And then it's going to take a second to build your website. So just give it a little bit of time, and I'll see you guys when it's done. All right, and congratulations, our website has been built. So we can click right here to view your website, and it'll open it up on a new tab. So let's take a look at it. Perfect. So now when someone goes to the new domain name that you just purchased, which mine is levisproducts.com, it's going to look like this. This is what all of your clients are seeing right now. So already off the bat, it's only been, what, just a few minutes, like 10, 20 minutes, and you already have a fully functioning up and running website. Can you believe it? Crazy. So you can scroll through the website as you want. You can take a look. You can click on Add to Cart if you want to, and it'll add these fake products to cart. Now, obviously, you don't have this bicycle in stock, but you get the idea. I can go over here and play around with the website just to see that everything works. You'll see that now if I click on my shopping cart, I can see the new bicycle that I just added, and then I can also just remove it from my cart right here. I don't actually have to go to my cart page to you know make remove products, and so that's kind of new. So now that we're taking a look at our website, it's all good to go up and running. We can go ahead and close out of this tab because we're going to have to start making some changes. And I'm also going to close out of starter templates. So now I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And also, just in case you guys didn't open that up on a new tab, so you have your website open like this, and you're wondering, oh no, I don't have multiple tabs like Levi. Uh, how do I get back to my WordPress dashboard? Click on the little W right up here in the top left corner. So if I'm looking at my website, I go up here and I click on the W, and you're good to go. So that's how you can get out of your website when you're looking at it. So that little W in the corner. Okay. So I'm going to close that tab because <laughs> I don't need two dashboards open. Okay, so now that we've installed a template and we practically have a working website at our fingertips, I know you're dying to customize it to add all of your images and make it look really cool. So let's jump right into that. We're going to jump into step number three, which is to customize your website. Okay, so in order to customize your website, we're going to be using that drag and drop page builder that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and also earlier on as well. So we're going to go over to the top left corner. This is how you open your website every single time. We're going to hover over our website name, and you can click on Visit Site or Visit Store. If I click on Visit Site, which I'm going to open on a new tab, it'll just show me my homepage. But the cool thing is, with WooCommerce, if I click on Visit Store, it'll show me my store page, which I think is pretty cool that you can jump between the two uh, straight from your WordPress dashboard. But anyways, we're going to go up here. You can also just click on your name, and it's the same thing as clicking on Visit Site. Open it on a new tab, and this is how you preview your site. Okay. So we're looking at Levi Higgins or Levi'sproducts.com. From here to edit your site, we're going to click on this button right here, Edit with Elementor. Okay, welcome to the Elementor dashboard. This is really easy to use. Don't worry, don't get too uh, intimidated or anything. I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. But uh, this is how we're going to be editing the meat of your website, how the images look. We'll change the colors up. We can change the text. Everything that you're looking at right here on this preview, you can change, which is the coolest thing ever. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this navigator because you're not going to need it. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to be going over how to use the basics of Elementor. I've got tons and tons of tutorials on the website that show you how to use this entire software in depth and how to build tons of different websites as well. Today, the whole point is to teach you guys how to build an e-commerce website. So my focus is going to be more on how to actually set up the e-commerce website, how to add the products, how to do all those things. Um, not necessarily how to use Elementor, but I am going to show you guys obviously how to use it a little bit right now. So anytime you want to change text in Elementor, just click on it just like this and you can literally type straight on the screen just like that. So if I want to change this from newly launched to something else, I can change it to whatever I want. If I want to change this title, I just click on it and I can put my mouse wherever I want and I can type my name if I want to. And so that's the first thing that's really easy about Elementor. Anytime you see text anywhere on this website, this is text right here. I can click on it. I can also type right here if I wanted to. If I scroll on down a little bit more and I see some text over here, I can click on it. This one's a little bit different. I can type straight on the screen, but it's not a actual text widget. This is more of an icon box. But as soon as I click on it, you see that whatever it is opens up over here on the left-hand side. You see icon box right here up in the top corner. And so again, you can see lightweight lightweight and then there's the lorem ipsum lorem ipsum and so if i also type on the left hand side right here you'll see that it also pops up on the right hand side so both of these the left and right are linked together so anywhere you see text if i want to change this one i click on it and i can start typing right here anywhere you see text you can always change it just by clicking on it and just typing immediately what you want so anywhere you see it you see all this text we can change it too it's pretty simple let's scroll on back to the top so now that we know how to change text, we can also change the background of all of these sections. And so let me explain kind of the layout of Elementor. So we've got the background, which is all of this. We've got an image back there, and then we've got some black and some red over here. So it's kind of a color situation. And so this whole background is called a section. And you'll notice that every time I hover inside the section, this blue line goes all the way around saying that this is a section. So if I scroll down and I put my mouse here, now the blue line is saying, yep, this is also a section right here. This is a section right here. And so the section you can think of as the background. Inside of a section, I can put a column, which is this gray dotted line. Okay? And then inside of a column, I can put widgets, which are the small blue boxes right here. You see how it's hovering? Okay, so those are widgets. That is a title widget or a heading widget. If I click on it, it says it's a heading widget. If I click on this button right here, I click anywhere in this blue square, it's going to say this is a button widget, okay? This is an icon list. If I click on it, it's going to say it's an icon list, just like that. So anytime I want to edit something, I can just click on it. Or you can right-click and say edit. So if we want to edit the background, we have to edit the section, right? And if we want to edit the column, like maybe change all of these things over to the right-hand side or something like that, spacing or whatever, we can click on the gray box right here, and now I'm editing the column. And then if I want to edit a widget, which is inside of a column, I can just click on the widget. So I hope that kind of clears things up for you. I know you see all of these lines and things popping up every time I hover everything. It can look a little intimidating. It's really simple. There's only three things. It's the background, which is the section, the column inside of it, and you can have multiple columns. So if I click here and I say add a column, now you'll see I've got a second one ready to go. And I can click here and I can add something like a picture. And so now I've got another column right here. And there's my first one. I'm going to right click and delete it. You don't have to copy along with me on that part. I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, so let's change the background up. You can click on the six dots right here and it says edit section right there. You can see that. And so now I'm editing the section or the background. Or you can also just right click out here in the nothingness and say edit the section because you're out inside of this blue square out here. Now, of course, if I click here, I'm not editing the section. I'm editing this widget. So make sure you know where your mouse is. So edit the section. I can scroll through here under the Layout tab, and this is just basic layout stuff, like if I want everything boxed or if I want it full width. And so that means that now, as you can see, uh, the column is stretched to the sides of the screen rather than boxed, which is kind of like boxed in the middle. That's just a layout preference. It's whatever you want to do. Uh, you've got height, uh, column position, like left, middle, top, you know, all that stuff. So that's layout. Go to the Style tab, and you can change things like the background image, Right, so there's that picture of the bike. I can change the background overlay, which is the black and red right here. So background overlay is like background colors, basically. And then I can change a border, shape dividers, and all that stuff, which we're not going to get too much into all of that stuff. And then I've got the advanced tab. And the advanced tab is where I can change things like margins and padding and motion effects and things like that, which we're also not going to get too in-depth into any of that stuff. 
uh, in other videos I do, but, you know, for the sake of time. Okay. So, let's go ahead and change this entire section to look like it's mine. And so in order to do that, I'm going to make sure I'm editing the section, and if you accidentally clicked on something else, you can just right-click out here and say Edit Section, or click on those six dots. And then from here, we're going to go to the back, to the Style tab, and let's change this image. And it's really easy. If I want to change it, just click on it. And it's going to open up the Insert Media box right here, and so I can either upload from my computer, or I can go to my Media Library, which is my the library of pictures and stuff on my website. So this is on my computer, on my website. So I'm going to upload files and select files, and then it's going to open up my dialog box here. And so I can go to my WooCommerce tutorial, and I've got my images. And so I, these are a whole bunch of images that I downloaded for free on the internet using a website called Unsplash. So if you guys want to download your own images to follow along so that you have something to put in there, and then later on you put your own, I just went to unsplash.com. And this website is where you can get high-resolution free images. You can search for anything. If you search for mountains, you get a bunch of mountains. Really easy. And then whenever you want one, you click on it and you say download for free. That's it. And so uh, that's the exact same thing that I did here. I just downloaded a bunch of images that I searched for under like men's grooming and stuff like that. So I'm just going to highlight them all and say insert. And it'll take a second to upload all of those. All right. And then after that, when they're done installing, I can just click on whichever one I want. So let's just pick this one just because it's random. And I'm going to say insert media. Perfect. And as you can see, just like that, I've already switched the image in the background. Now, what I'm going to do is something a little different. Instead of a classic, which is just an image, you can do a gradient, a video, or a slideshow. And so gradient would look like this, uh, and you can change the color to whatever you want. And then a video would just be a YouTube link, and it'll play in the background. But I'm going to choose a slideshow. And I'm going to select my three images, and then I'm going to go over here, and I'll pick this one, and then maybe this one, and maybe that one. And who knows, maybe I'll choose a fourth one. Actually, no, I'll stick to these three. Okay, so I'm going to click on Create New Gallery. And from here, I can change the order by just dragging them like this, but I actually kind of like the order that they're in. And I'll say Insert. And just like that, now every five seconds, which that's 5,000 milliseconds. I don't know why it does it in milliseconds, but okay. So every five seconds, it's going to switch to a new image. So actually, I'm going to change this to four seconds. So 4,000, because you just take whatever the second is, obviously multiply it by 1,000. Okay. So now, this black and red is actually getting on my nerves. It looked really cool with the bike because it was all symmetrical, but with all of the images that I have, I'm actually just wanting it to be completely black. And so we're going to go over to the background overlay tab right here, and then I can change this from a gradient to classic, which is just one color. And then I can just select a better color. So let's just choose black like this. And then I've got my opacity right here. And so I can make it completely black like that, or no black at all, which is just uh, opaque. Uh, well, transparent, opaque, you get what I mean. So I'm probably going to go for something like maybe in the halfway point, something like 47 looks good, 0.47. I think it looks pretty good. So I like that dark background with my white text popping off of it. I think it looks good. And so now that I've made my changes to the background, I'm actually good. I'm going to click on Update to save my work. And that just publishes all the changes you made to your website live. Okay, so now that we've changed the background, we can change the text here if we want to. We could change this to something like newly launched. Actually, I'm going to leave that here. And then I could say, uh, let's just make up a product name here. And so I'll do something like, because that was one of the images in the background. Okay, so newly launched, ultra lather shaving cream or something like that. Or you could just change this to the site title. So this could be something like Levi Hagen's products or gr men's grooming products. Or this could be literally whatever you want it to be. This just looks like it's more of a promotional and so that's why I'm doing it. And then you can change the specifications here. You could change this by clicking on this icon list here. And so you'll notice that there's three icons here. One, two, three. They kind of look like bullet points. And over here, we've got three items. One, two, and three. And if I want to replace the order, I can just click and drag like this. And so now steel is going to be on top. Pretty easy. I can duplicate it by clicking on this button. And then I can hit the X button and it removes it. And if I want to click on it, I can change my text. It's pretty intuitive. You can see right there, lightweight 18 frame. It's right here. So if I were to change this to something else like that, you'll see that it changes instantly. I'm going to hit Control or Command Z to undo what I just did right there. Okay, and so that's how you can change those. Now let's go ahead and edit your button. So I'm going to click on the button here, and you'll see that it says Edit Button. And it's pretty easy. We'll go over to the Style tab. And under the Style tab, I can change the color if I want to, but I'm not going to. 
there's two ways to change the color. The first is to individually change the color of whatever you're working with. So maybe I want this button to be a different color than all of the other red buttons, as you can see, or I can change them all as a whole. And so right here under the style tab, you can change things like the color, the font and all of that stuff. But I'm not gonna touch this because it's already programmed into the template. And a little bit later on, I'm gonna show you guys how you can change all of the colors on the entire website. But for now, uh, this is how you change it individually if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Okay, so the content tab is where you can change the text on the button and also where it takes you. And so the text is buy now right here. So maybe instead of buy now, I could say check out more or learn more, something like that. And so now you can see that it says learn more, pretty easy. And then also right here, I've got the link. And so my link is this hashtag right here. And so I can put, instead of this placeholder, I can put whatever URL I want. So as you can see, it's got a fake URL as the placeholder. Whatever I put right here, that button, when you click on it, is gonna take you there. So if I put YouTube and then I click update, let me show you guys. I'm gonna preview my changes by clicking on this little eyeball right next to the update button. And it's basically gonna open up a preview of my website. So now I'm previewing my site. You can see when I click on learn more, it's gonna open up YouTube, just like that. So that's pretty cool. So whenever you put a link right here, that button takes you to that link. So I'll just put that hashtag back for now because I don't have a product that I want to link to it. Okay, so now my hero section looks pretty cool. I've got these images in the background changing every four seconds. I've got my cool title and everything. And you guys know how to change all of this. You can scroll on down. I'm not going to change this, but again, you can type out whatever you want here. It's already laid out to be a store. So all you want to do is basically just kind of swap your images in there and then obviously swap out the text of like mountain bikes to whatever your products actually are. So instead of mountain bikes, maybe this is uh, a new shaving cream or a new whatever it may be. Uh, but it's pretty, it's laid out the correct way. So we're not going to be making too big of changes to this template. So when I scroll on down, the next thing I want to do is change this background. So again, I'm going to click on edit the section, the six dots, go to the style tab, and I can just choose whatever image I want right here. And so the first one I'm going to choose is maybe something like this and click on insert. And there's my image. And then I'll scroll on down a little bit more and click on the six dots to edit my section, and then I'll choose something else. So let's go to the style tab, and then I'll choose the uh, image right here. Let's just pick this one because I like that one. We'll scroll on down a little bit more, click on the six dots on the last one, style tab, and then we can change this image as well, and we'll choose this one. So I'll click on insert media, and now you can see that as I scroll through here, I have completely changed the images and so now it kind of looks like a different website. Now, of course, after inserting my images, I'd come over here and I'd say what this product is. So maybe these are cl uh, clippers or trimmers or something like that. So I would say beard trimmers, just like that. And then I'd put in all of the information right here. And then I'd scroll on down and this would be, you know, I don't know, some kind of like a carry case, accessory case or something like that. Uh, and then maybe this last one is a hydrating lotion. You guys get the idea. All I have to do is scroll through here, put in my images, and then change up what the text says. And it's really self-explanatory. So of course you guys are gonna do this for whatever your business is. I just wanna show you guys how to use the software. So now let's go ahead and scroll on down a little bit further. Why choose Cairo? Uh, again, you would just text right here, uh, why choose Levi? Something like that, why choose Levi's products? And then I could click right here and I can edit all of these images if I wanted to. Now to change these images, they're not a section background because the background of the section, as you can see, is all of this, it's white. And so to change these pictures, that's the background of the column right here. So I click on this column, it says edit column, go to the style tab, same situation where I go to style tab and it's under background, but it's just for the column and not for the section. And so it's really easy, just click on the image and I change it. And so I could choose something like this one, and let's just change them really fast. I'm not gonna go too slow for this part. So just click on the gray, do uh, the gray box again. And we go to style tab and I can change this one as well. So it's just that easy. All I have to do is just insert my own images and look how fantastic that looks. And then instead of saying lightweight, maybe these are, you know, I could say like quality products and this could be like quality guaranteed. And that's where you could easily just click here and change the text right here. Or you can literally just type on the screen just like this. All right. We'll scroll on down. This is another featured product section and there's a blank, a, a blank square right here, but if I click on it, you'll see that this is short code to pull uh, a featured category of products. And so it's just not showing inside of Elementor, but if we preview the site, you'd be able to see them. And then the last part is this video section. This is very clever how they did this. 
uh, you'll notice that the background of this column, exact same situation as these up here, the background of this column right here, go to the style tab, it's just a picture. It's not an actual video thumbnail, it's just a picture. And so I guess it's the equivalent of a thumbnail if you understand what I mean, but we'll change the image. So let's pick this one and say insert. And so in the background, now I've got this right here and all this is is two widgets, an icon. So if I click on it, it's just an icon. And then this right here is text. It's just a heading text, like a title. But it makes it look like it's a video because you got the play button right here. And so what you would do is maybe click on the icon right here and then you can enter in a link. And so again, if I were to put in YouTube right here, like as a, as a hyperlink, then whenever they click on the play button, it would take them to YouTube. Uh, so I would want the exact hyperlink of the video. So like I'd go to YouTube and then I'd search whatever video it is and then I'd copy that hyperlink like this and then I would paste it right here. All right, so that is this video right here. And again, this is just another button. You click on it and you can change the title and the link as well. And that goes for the same thing up here as well for these featured sections up here. So maybe I wanna say like these are three categories. And so, you know, this is like accessory cases, this is trimmers and this is like lotions. And then I would have this button go to a lotion section, like a category. And I'll show you guys how to hook these up later on in the video. Again, don't worry. Uh, right now, I just want to show you guys how to switch out your pictures and text. Okay, so that does it. We're done. We've updated the and customized the website, and I think it looks really cool. Uh, so I'm going to click on update to save my work. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of Elementor because we're not going to be customizing the website anymore. And we're going to move on to the next step. But just a quick explanation. If you guys want to customize all of the other pages of the website, it's really easy to do. Go over here to the Pages tab and open it up on a new tab. And just like the Plugins tab, the Pages tab, this is a list of all of the pages on your website. There's a Cart page, an About page, a Contact page, Home page, My Account, Privacy, all of this stuff. And so all of these pages, you can edit them whenever you want. So if you want to go over here to the About Us page, you just click on Edit with Elementor just like this. And now I'm editing the About page. And so maybe I go over here and do the same thing that I did earlier. And I just enter in like an About page picture. Let's just pick one. I'll just choose this one for now. So something like this. So now it's got those products in the background. And let me just change this picture as well. And this is just as an example. You guys don't have to follow along for this part. Insert and Update. And so this is how you can edit every page with Elementor. So close it out. So About Us has been edited. And then maybe I go over here to Contact and I click Edit with Elementor. And then I can uh, edit that page inside. And so now if I open my website up, just to show you guys, if you go to the home page, it's all updated and, and looking good, right? I go back up to the top and I say About Us. And boom, there's the changes that I made in Elementor, right? And then I can go to the Contact page. And these would also be uh, the changes if I were to make them in Elementor. So you can click on edit right here, or when you open your website as a preview like I just did, you can also click on edit with Elementor right here, and whatever page you're on, you will start editing that page. And so now here's the contact page inside of Elementor. So I'm gonna close out of those tabs, go back to the WordPress dashboard. I just wanted to show you guys that you can edit every single page on your website. When it comes to editing your store page, so the one that looks like this, it's different. We have to use the customizer tab to edit this because this is a part of Astra. But if you go to the about page, these are a part of Elementor. So anything that has to do with your actual store pages, we're going to have to use Astra for. Okay, we can go ahead and move on to step number four, which is to create our own products for the website. So we get to create six different types of products. We've got the simple product, variable, digital, downloadable, affiliate, and group products. In order to create your own products, we're going to go over here to the products tab, as you can see right here, and then we'll go to all products right here. So let's open it up on a new tab. The first thing I want to do is basically delete all of the stock fake products that come with the template, right? Because if you remember when we downloaded the template, we got all those fake pictures of people on bikes, all of these fake pictures of products, all of these fake products, they're all built and everything. You can go in here and try and just edit each individual product change the title, change the description, change the price, change all that stuff. It'd be a pain in the butt to try and do. So I wouldn't recommend trying to go through and just individually edit all of these. I would literally just click on this box right here to check all of them, as you can see. Go to bulk actions and say move to trash and then just apply. Okay, we just deleted all of the products. If you did that because you were just blindly following along with me and you were like, wait, no, I didn't want to do that. It's okay, go to the trash bin right here 
and you'll see they're all still here. And you can, again, you can check them individually if you want, or you can check all of them at the same time by doing this. And then you can say restore or delete permanently, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, so again, I went to trash. I can restore what I accidentally deleted, or I can actually delete them if I want to. So I'm going to say permanently delete and apply. Okay, so we've got a fresh clean slate. Now, if I want to add a new product, there's two ways I can do it. I can go over here to create product, or I can click on add new right here under products. So add new or create. Either way, it's the same, the same thing. We're going to click on create product, and it's going to open up the add new product page. And so here is how we create products. I'm just gonna click on dismiss because I'm gonna show you guys how to use this entire thing. It's really simple, so we'll, we'll make this really quick. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be creating a simple product. So a simple product is just what it is. It's simple. There's no externalities, there's no extras to it, there's no sizes, colors, there's no different options or anything like that. It's just one product, you can buy it or you don't. That's all it is. So let's go ahead and create a simple product. Uh, we're going to go over here to the product name, or which is basically like the product title, and we can call it whatever we want. Now, I'm going to be creating like a, it's like a little bottle of cologne is my simple product for this website, but uh, just for simplicity's sake, uh, and so that you guys can know exactly which product I'm talking about when I point to it, I'm literally going to call it a simple product. Okay, so the simple product, it's really easy to make. We're going to go down here to the product description. This is where you put in all of the information that you can think of about this product. This is where you can say what it's compatible with, what it has, what's in it, what's on it, how big is it, you know, the dimensions, everything. So, like, if I were to go to Amazon right now, okay, so if I'm looking at a bottle of cologne and I just click on this one, for instance, I can look at it. This is the description down here, and then we have a short description, which is going to pop up kind of, like, right here. I'm just kind of showing you guys an example. So, the description, as you can see, they put a lot of information. This is where basically everyone can read everything you need about the product. So to this, the description is going to be a lot bigger than down here, which is the short description, okay? And you guys will see this as soon as we're done and I publish the product, but for now, I just wanted to kind of explain that to you. So for these descriptions, I'm literally just going to look for some dummy text. So for the sake of simplicity, Controller command c I'm just copying dummy text, which is just a bunch of Latin that doesn't make any sense. I mean, unless you speak Latin, which I don't. So I'm going to paste it right here. But again, this is where you would put all of your important information about the product, but this isn't like the first thing you want them to read. I don't know why they have the description up here and the short description down here, because technically the short description is literally right under the title, and then the big description is actually going to be at the bottom of the product. And so it's kind of inverted like that, and again, you'll understand as soon as we're done here. But the simple product is really fast and easy to make. Okay. So the title's done, the description is done. We can go down here and I'm gonna paste a different short description. So I'm actually gonna write one out real quick. Something like that, that you could ever hope to buy. Uh, let me put a space here, exclamation mark. So whenever you see this text right here, you know that it's the short description. And then whenever you see the dummy text, you'll know that it's the big description. And so that way that you, that way you guys know what's what when we look at the product. Okay, so we've got the product title, the description, and then we already finished the short description, which is kind of like a little blurb that's going to be right there under the title. Now we can move on to the product data right here. And then sometimes this AIOSEO settings is open, and so it looks like this. You can just click on it and it'll close it. So we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go over how to do the very basics for now. And so this is how you can set up the product. We've got product data. You'll click here and you'll notice that there's a bunch of different products, and these are the ones that I mentioned earlier. We've got the simple product, group, affiliate, variable, download, and digital, which it, they call it virtual, but it's the same thing. And so we're going to leave it on simple product here. Next, we'll go to the general tab, and this is where we set the price. Very simple. Regular price, let's just say it's on a $100 bottle. $100. And you'll see that my dollars are set right here. I'll show you guys in just a second how you can change your dollar sign to something else if you guys are in a different country. Uh, basically, you know what, I'll do it right now. You go over to the settings tab under WooCommerce. So go over here to settings, and I'm going to open it on a new tab because I don't want to lose my place here. You guys don't have to follow this, I just want to show you. Under the general tab, so right after you click settings, go to the very bottom, and right here, currency, you guys can choose whatever currency you have. Okay, but I'm the United States dollar, so that's what I'm going to keep. And then you click save changes. You can also change like the thousand separator, the currency position, all of this stuff. I'm going to close out of this tab and not make any changes. I just wanted to show you guys that's how you do it. Okay. So under the general tab, we're just setting a price. So it's $100. If I want a sale price, I can say, you know, let's just say it's $80. Okay. And so it's $100 normally, and it'll be a slash through it. And it says, but it's $80 right now. 
So you can set a sale price or you can just have it a regular price. We'll go over to inventory. The SKU is basically the license plate for this product. It's a stock keeping unit is what it's called. And it's basically a, a uh, identifier for this product. It's unique to only this product. So you could say 00001. If you plan on having a lot of products, you might want to you know, have enough digits where now the next product will be 0002 and then 0003 uh, as I build more products. Um, but that's your stock keeping number. Do you want to manage stock? If you say no and you don't check this, the, the website won't know how many you have and it's just going to sell them as long as you tell it to. If you say yes, which is really cool, you can say how much you have. So let's say you're selling water bottles out of your living room or something like that. You can look over your shoulder and be like, huh, I've got 50 water bottles. So you put 50 right here. And then every time someone buys one, the website will automatically keep track of how many you have. And then you can say, do you want to allow back orders? So let's say you sold all 50 of them. Do you want to allow people to keep buying them? And you say yes, no, or yes, but I want to notify, hey, this is back ordered. I've already sold out, so I've got to order more to send them to you. So after you sell the 50, that's what that is. And then the low stock threshold, it's just, you know, uh, you could say that this is 10. And so basically, once I sell 40 of these and I get down to 10 left and the website can count that I have 10 left, it'll say, hey, Levi, just so you know, uh, you only have 10 left. You might want to order some more of these water bottles or whatever you're selling. So really simple stuff here, really easy to use. And if you don't want to do all of this, you can literally just uncheck the box and it's gone. You can say whether it's, if you're not managing the stock, you can either say if it's in stock or out of stock or on back order. So whether or not you're actually managing your stock or not, you can just have this. And then the last thing is sold individually. And so you either say yes or no, and basically this removes or allows the quantity adjustment. Like if they want to click on the plus button and say, I want to order two of these or three of these, you're limiting it to one per purchase, per order basically. And so I'll show you guys that in just a second. So then we can go over to the shipping tab, very standard. All you're going to do is just put in the weight of the product and the dimensions. And so I'm not even going to do this because, you know, uh, I obviously don't have a real product here to sell, but I'm just showing you guys that this is where you put in your shipping weight of the product. And then we can go linked products. I'm going to show you guys this later. Promise. This is going to be the last step of, or the last portion of this step. I'll tell you guys what upsells and cross sells are. Attributes we're going to skip over as well because that's for variable products. So we're just going to skip it. And then the advanced tab, you've got the purchase note right here. And so basically you can write like a little thank you, like thanks. Thank you for purchasing this product we hope you enjoy or something like that. It's just a little note. If you hover over this, it says enter an optional note to send to the customer after they purchase. And so it'll just display this whenever you uh, do it, but I'm not going to put anything here. Okay. So that's how we set up a product. It's very simple because it's a simple product. There's not much to it. We just gave it a price. We're not even managing stock. I didn't put a weight, uh, but it's pretty simple. Okay. So now I'm going to go over here to the right hand side. I've got the product image, so I can select my product image. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to upload from my computer and use all of these. Now I'm uploading all of them at the same time, but I'm not going to select them all right now. So I select the product image that I want to display first. And so that's this one. And I say set as my main image. Done. And then after I'm done, I can add a product gallery, which are all of the extra images that people can look at. So first you upload the main one, then you upload all the, the rest of them. Okay, so now you see I've got my main image and then the three supporting images. And I can also change the order just by dragging them just like this. So now this one's going to show up first and then this one and that one. So I've got images, price, stock keeping. The last thing I want to do is my product categories and my tags. So categories are going to be like if you go to Amazon, for instance, and then you search all. So I can look through here. This is clothing, shoes, and jewelry. This is books, movies, electronics, see all. These are the categories that we're building right now, okay? And there's multiple products under these categories, so there's lots of shoes under the product category of shoes. So I'll just leave Amazon open so I can use it as an example for you guys. So we're creating a category. So I can add a new category, and let's just say that this is cologne and perfume. Well, let's just say cologne, and then we can maybe create another one that says perfume. But again, I'm not going to be creating too many categories because I don't have that many products to make. These are all just to show you how to do it. But if I create it, all I have to do is say add new category. It's going to automatically add this product to the cologne category. Now, let's say maybe I've got multiple colognes under this main parent category, and I want to have subcategories. So maybe I've got, you know, I don't know, small, medium, large, or 
something. I don't even know what a, a subcategory would be of colognes, but uh, bear with me. Let's just say uh, small, medium, large. So we'll say small, and then we'll add it to cologne as a parent category. Say add, and then you'll notice that it places it underneath the cologne category as like a subcategory. It's kind of indented over. And so you can have multiple subcategories. So maybe on Amazon, you'll see that they have books, but then they've got, uh, you know, fiction, nonfiction, biographical narratives, history, all of that stuff. So they've got subcategories under the main category of books. That's how you do it. Really, really easy. You can just come over here and create a new one, whatever you want it to be, put it under another one if you want to, or just leave it as a parent category and then click add. Very simple. The last thing you do to your product is product tags. Now on your website, if I open this up on a new tab, you'll sometimes have a search bar or something like that in the shop page. And so if I go to the shop page, you'll have a search bar right here to search for different products and things like that. What you're searching for, this will search your website for a specific term. So if I put in whatever I want here, it'll search for ASD, ASF. Obviously I'm just typing with one hand because I've got my hand on the mouse, but we'll close out of that. Um, you can tag this product with as many keywords as you can so that if someone were to search for something like cologne, I add it, boom. So if they search for cologne, this product will pop up. Maybe they search for small or smell good or perfume. If they you know, search for perfume, they might want to go to something other perfume. As you can see, basically the idea is you add as many of these as possible so that if someone searches for something related to this product, this product will pop up. That way they don't just have to search for the exact name you know, simple product, because the, the title is simple product right here. So you want this to be able to pop up no matter what, but let's put simple on here as well, just in case I search for simple later on in the video to show you how it works, and then for some reason the cologne product doesn't pop up. Now it will. Okay. So now that we've done all of that, we've got our images, the price, and everything, we can go up here to the top right corner, and we can click on publish. And when we click on publish, it's going to do what it says. We're publishing that product live to our website. Now people can purchase this product if they want to. So let's go preview it. We're gonna go over here and open up our store on a new tab. Another way that you can do this, by the way, I'm opening up my store, there it is. You can also, from the editing of the actual product itself, preview the changes. Yeah, so if you click on preview changes, it'll open up a new tab and you can see the actual product. So you can do it two ways, but I normally just open up a new tab with my website because that's just what I'm used to. It's whatever you wanna do. Okay, so now I'm looking at my store and I've got my main image, which is showing the product, which is pretty cool and you'll see that it is in the cologne category. If you guys remember, I made that category. And so filter by categories, you can see that there's a category over here, it's cologne. So it shows the category. This is the title of the product. It gives this little star rating because people can leave reviews on your website just like they do on Amazon, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but there's no star ratings yet because no one's even rated the product, obviously. And then uh, as you can see right here, this is the price. And so $100 was the regular price and remember, we set a sales price of $80, and so now 80 is the main price, 100 is scratched out. All I would have to do to change that is remove the 80, and now it's $100. Update my product, and I go back to the shop and refresh my page. Boom, just like that, it's $100 with no line through it. Pretty simple, I just wanted to show you guys that's how you do it. Now we can click on the product, and then we can see the main product page. Obviously they've got the whole same features that Amazon does. I can hover my mouse and I'm zooming, which you guys love my Photoshop skills? I put my own fake logo onto this bottle of whatever this is. <laughs> Took a little bit of time, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so they can look at this product if they want to, and then they can click on these different images and see the products as they look at them. There's my logo again. Okay, and so also, if you notice, this is the best cologne that you could ever hope to buy. So that is the short description down here at the bottom. So the short description is right here. It's the first thing they see after the price. And then the main description, all of this fake dummy text is down here. So do you see what I mean? I don't understand why they have the short description on the bottom. It's just not very intuitive. Short description's down here, main description's up here, but it's inverted on your actual website. So I just wanted to show you guys. Also, they can see the SKU so that if they want to reference like a specific exact product, they can give you like the license plate essentially of this product right here. And then you can see your categories, all of the tags. So let me go ahead and try searching for it right now. If I go over here and I go to the shop page, I could search for cologne. And now this product will pop up because I searched for cologne, which is one of the tags. So, And then if there were multiple products, it wouldn't just open it up as a main like this. It would open up like a tab showing a bunch of different products. So I just wanted to make that clear.
Let's close out of that tab and go back. Okay, so we finished the simple product. Now we can move on to the second one, which is the variable product. So I'm going to go back to the all products tab right here. And now we can see there's the simple one. So let's add a new one. And you'll notice that purple create product button disappeared after you already have products. It's only there at the very beginning. So whenever you want to add new, you click on add new right here or at the top, add new right here. So let's create a variable product. I'm going to click on add new. And we're starting from a clean, fresh slate again. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually name the product. And you guessed it, it's going to be called variable product, just like we called the other one simple product. You can, of course, call this whatever it actually is. It's pretty simple. Another thing that I forgot to mention on the single, uh, the simple product, we've got the permalink right here. Now the permalink is basically whenever someone goes to your website and they've got all this gibberish behind your hyperlink here, you'll notice that it's going to say variable dash product. You can actually edit your permalink to be something really short, like t-shirt or something like that. So if you guys ever wanted to, you can just click on edit and you can change that here. Okay. We've got the variable product here and I'm sure that some of you guys are bothered that I didn't capitalize the first letter. So I will do that for you and let's move on. Now we've got the description, and if you remember, the description is at the very bottom of the product, and this is where you put all of the important information, so let's just put a fake paragraph down here. So we've got our product description, and that's where you, again, would put all your important information about the size, the you know type of materials used, all that stuff. Scroll on down, and we've got the product data. And so with the product data, again, we're going to come right here, and instead of choosing the simple product, we're going to move on down to variable product. And it's going to open up some different things. Also, it's going to take away the regular price here because when you have a variable product, you have to set the price for each individual variation. So a small t-shirt might not cost the same as a large t-shirt. And, you know, uh, maybe a black t-shirt costs a little bit more than a red t-shirt or something like that. Or maybe different graphics have different costs and things like that. So that's why they remove the basic price. And again, so if I go back to simple product, you'll see here's the regular price under general. And that's just going to disappear when I hit variable because we're going to be doing the attributes and the variations down here, and that's where we'll set the price. Everything else is pretty much the same as the simple product, except for the attributes and variation. So under inventory, again, you have an SKU, which we did 00001. So now we can just do 00002. So this is kind of irrelevant. Obviously, it's important for actually managing an e-commerce website, but for this tutorial, it's kind of irrelevant. We've got the manage stock button. And again, you can either choose not to manage your stock or you can. Uh, and then the website will just keep track as it sells. It'll automatically know. And then, you know, maybe you're getting 100 orders a day. And so it'll let you know when you have 100 products left. So you know, oop, I've got to order products by today or tomorrow I won't have any. So same thing as the simple product. We can enter in how many we have. Do we want uh, to allow people to order even when we don't have any? And then also, how many do I have before it tells me that I need to buy more, right? So that's the low stock threshold right there. And then also, again, we can choose to have these sold individually right here. All it does is when you open up a product, it removes this little quantity box. So instead of being able to select multiple quantities, it would only show the add to cart button. That's it. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Okay, so that's the sold individually. We go over to the shipping tab, no changes. We've just got weight and dimensions. And so you guys can put in all your information here. Linked products, again, we'll go over this later. All right. Attributes. So right here, you'll notice there's no other option when I click on the drop down, just custom product attributes. So you just have to say add. All right. And then once you click on add, it's going to ask you to create a name and then all of the values. You title whatever the attribute is, and then you actually give the attributes. So for instance, we're going to go with color. And then we'll go over here to the value side, and we have to separate them by this little uh, straight line right here. So let's do something like, uh, I think I have black space and then do that line space and then i'll do let's see red blue so now that we've done that we've got black red blue and white we're good to go and then we can say do we want to use these for variations and you're going to say yes you want to use these for variations because we have to create individual variations for each of these because technically these are variations a black variation, a red variation, and all those. So now I have to go in and edit the black one individually, the red one individually, the blue one, and the white one. So a variable product just has a bunch of subcategories underneath it, if that makes sense. All right, so now that we've created color, we can save the attribute, and you'll notice that it has color right here. Okay, so if you wanted to add another one, like size, for instance, all you do is again click on add, and now I could say size, right? And then I could say small just like that, and then I could say use for variations and save attributes. This one I'm not going to keep, by the way. I just wanted to show you guys. You can have multiple attributes, quote-unquote, that have multiple variations underneath this. And so now I've got 
one black that could be a small, medium, large, a red that could be small, medium, large, blue could be small, medium, you get the idea. It starts to multiply pretty quickly. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys that's how it's done. Let's go ahead and minimize both of those. I'm gonna come over here and click on the remove button for size. And that's how you can remove an attribute. Okay, so now I've got color ready to go and I've already said that I wanna use it for variations. So now let's go over to the variations tab. All right, so under the variations tab, we can add variation or create variations from all attributes. Instead of adding them one by one, I'm gonna let WooCommerce do it for me automatically by selecting this one right here. Create variations from every single attribute. So watch what happens. I'm gonna click on this one and say go. And it's gonna say, hey, are you sure? It can only do 50 per run. And so you might have to do it multiple times, but I'm gonna say, yes, do it. I click okay. And then it's gonna say, boom, four were created. And so we'll click okay and now you'll see the four variations that we have down below. So now I've got a list of all the variations, just like if I'm on the attributes page, I've got a list of all of my attributes, right? And then each one of these I can click on and it expands to show me all the information inside. And so I still have the black right here, red, blue, white, and then I'm gonna minimize it. So we have to edit each individual one of these products and that's why variable products take a little bit more time than regular products. I'm gonna click on this button right here, which says expand, and that's gonna expand each and every one of these for me so that I can expand all of them at the same time. So now, as you can see, they've all been expanded. So let's take care of them one by one. We've got the black product first, so let's go ahead and upload my black product image. So I'm gonna upload my files. Let's go ahead and upload the black one first because we're dealing with the black one. Set variation image. And you have to make sure you pay attention to that. If I'm editing the black one, make sure you have the black image, right? And so we'll set an SKU, so this will be 0003. We can set our regular price and the sale price, the same thing that we did before. Also, I forgot to mention, and you can do this on the single product, the simple product as well. So on any product you want, you can schedule the sale price. So instead of just putting a sale price and just forever, it's, you know, I don't know, $80 instead of $100, you can schedule it by clicking on this button, and it gives you a start date and end date. And then whenever it's outside of this start and end date, it'll just go back to the regular price. It's really simple. You just click on it and you can choose your calendar day and you can move through the October, December, you know, it's basic calendar stuff. So I'm gonna cancel it and it just moves those back up. So you've got your regular price. Let's just say this is normally $35 and the black t-shirt, let's just say is on sale for $30 because maybe I have too many of them and I need to start selling them. And then I'll say they're in stock. This is where you put in your weight and everything here for the individual products. And uh, then after that, we can ship it and we can put a little description if we want to. Uh, I'm not going to, but I just want to show you guys this is how you do it. I can put on here like, this is the black t-shirt description. All right, so we have finished editing this one. And so we're managing the stock. It's not downloadable or virtual or anything like that. You can also check if you want to manage the stock here by again, clicking here. And now you've got the same thing that you had before. You can manage whether you want to have, you know, 50 in stock. Do I want to allow back orders? And then what's my low stock threshold? Very simple. Okay, so now that we've done the black one, I can go down and do the red one. Now that I showed you how to do this, I'm going to go a little bit faster. So that being done, you want to click on save changes when you're done editing each individual variation. So we'll say save changes. And it should minimize all of them back up so that you can just see the list view again. And if it doesn't, you can always just click on the close button. Oh, looks like it did. So it minimized them again. But you can always click expand and it opens all of them and then close and it closes all of them. So that's pretty easy to do. And then other than that, we've got the advanced tab where we can do a purchase note again. And you can also enable or disable the reviews on this product, but I just re recommend leaving them enabled so that people can actually leave reviews on your products. Okay, and then after that, we can do the product short description. So let's just say... There we go, something like this, just to show you guys the short description as well. Let's go over to the right-hand side and we've got the product image. We're gonna set a default image, which is the black one, because that's just what I've chose to be uh, as the default image. If you don't set a default image, it'll just show a weird placeholder image whenever people are looking at the product store on your website. And so I'll show you guys what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, so now that I have a default image, remember we've already set all the individual images inside of the variations tab, so I'm not gonna go ahead and create a gallery. So now that we've done that, we can select our categories. So let's just add a new category and say t-shirts, something like this. And then we can scroll on down and we can add some tags. Honestly, I'm not gonna add any more tags, but you get the idea, we can add some tags if we want to. And then we're done. Let's go ahead and scroll up to the top and I'm gonna click on publish to save my work. 
Okay, perfect. So now our variable product has been published and it's good to go. Now remember the last thing we need to come back and do now that we have published our product is come back and do the swatches. And I'm not sure why you have to save the product first and then you can do the swatches. That's weird to me, but you know, whatever. We're gonna come over here to color. You click on it and now we can choose the black, red, blue, and white. We actually have to make the swatches for it. So come over here to uh, attribute type and you're gonna select color first. Now the down arrow pops up. So now when I click on black, I can select a color. If I choose a different attribute type like label, it'll ask me to make a label and so my swatch would be text rather than a color. But again, we're doing color, so that's what we're gonna do. By the way, the label would probably be if you wanted to do something like small, medium, large, you would do, you know, this would be S for small. And so you would have an S, M, and an L underneath your product. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. We're gonna do color. And so color, I'm gonna make it black just like this, because it's obvious. Red, I'm gonna select it, and we'll go with red. But um, the t-shirt is actually more of like a dark, dark red. So let's just do something like this. You'd probably want to go over there and literally copy the exact hex code from the, you know, the product description or something like that if they gave it to you or, or get it as close as possible or maybe do some photo editing magic to find out, you know, use an eyedropper tool. Whatever you want to do. You want this to be accurate, obviously, but I'm just eyeballing it here. The blue t-shirt, again, is just really dark blue. Yeah, something like that. And then the white t-shirt is obviously just white, so we'll go up to the top corner. Okay, so now that we set up our swatches, we click save, and we can see that they're saved. So now we're going to go up to the top and click update one more time. Okay, now we have our variable product. It's done. So now we can go over here to preview changes, or you can go over here and click on visit store, because I want to show you guys the store view, not just straight from the product. Because remember, if I click on this, you'll see it takes me straight to the product rather than taking me to the store. And so first I wanted to show you guys, as you can see, we've got our swatches available now. And I think that's really freaking cool. Now, as you can see, if I click red, it's gonna switch it. You can barely, here, I'll click on white. And then it switches it to the white t-shirt. So they get a live color preview without even having to click on the product. Can you believe that? And so as they're looking, you can barely tell. <laughs> I really should have made the blue and the red a little bit brighter, but you can tell, look, when I click on it, you can tell it switches from red to blue. Uh, and then also to white. And you'll also notice that the price is changing too, because remember, we set white to be the expensive one, and then blue was on sale for 30 black was also on sale for 30 and then red was just 35 So they're getting live previews as they're clicking on the swatches, but let's go ahead and click on the product. And you've got the little sale icon as well whenever you put a sale price on here. You'll notice that the default image is showing, and I also selected black to be the default image. I think I forgot to mention that. So if I go back to my tab where I'm editing the product under variations, Right up on top, it says default form values. So which one do you want to be default? And so I could say red, blue or white, but I chose black, that's why. So that's why black is showing by default. But if I chose red then the or the white one, then the white one would be the first one they see when they click on it. But now you can see that as you click through the swatches, the price changes and so does the color. And then you can add it to cart and then you can do the whole... Okay, so now we've gone over the variable product. We can go ahead and close out of this bad boy. Go back here, uh, we can actually close out of this tab as well, or we can just go back to all products by clicking right here. Okay, so now that we've finished the simple product and the variable product, we can now move on to the third product, which is a digital product, okay? It's different from a downloadable product, because digital and downloadable are both digital products, but one of them you can download and one of them you can't, if that makes sense. So maybe you want to have something like a Zoom call or like a coaching session or something like that, and so that'll be the example that I do today. So again, in order to add a new product, let's go up here to the product add new. You guys already know the drill. Let's get started with a product title and you guessed it, digital product, so it's really easy. And we'll go down here to the description and let's see if it's still on my clipboard. Yes, it is. So I can control or command paste, control or command V. And again, that's just dummy text from this website here. So let's scroll on down. Again, that would be your important description about the product. Okay, so now instead of choosing one of these, as you can see, digital isn't here because remember I said digital and virtual are the same thing to WooCommerce, they just call it virtual. We're gonna leave it on simple product and just check this box right here. And then when you check this box, you'll notice that the shipping tab disappears because you're not shipping a physical product. And so this could be anything, you know, uh, anytime you need something where you're not shipping it, it's a digital product, but they're also not downloading it, this is how you would do it, right? And so you have to be kind of creative with how you use these. We'll go over to the general tab because it's the first one that's open and we can put a price. Let's just say that this is a $200 coaching session or some something like that, I don't know. Let's just say it's an online class. And then now that we have the regular price, if you want, you can make it on sale. And then again, you can schedule it if you want. 
We'll go over to the inventory tab and we can give this an SKU. Do you want to manage stock? Managing stock for this yeah, it kind of depends. So obviously this is a virtual product. So you create it once and then you can sell it multiple times. And because it's not like a physical item, you can't really run out of stock. But let's say that this is like an online class, for instance. Well, I can run out of seats in the class. Like maybe I don't want to have, you know, 3000 people on my online course. Maybe I only want to limit it to 30 people. You know, you can always use the scarcity rule and try and say, hey, I only have like six seats left, purchase it now, you know, something like that. So managing stock for a digital product can be useful if you think about it. So I could, you know, I could click on manage stock and I could say that I only have 30 stock, but that basically means 30 seats. 30 people can buy this product. And then I can say, do not allow back orders, something like that. So now there's only 30, you can't buy it after 30. There's no wait list or anything like that. And I can say, once it gets down to like 10, alert me if I wanted to, but it's not that important for this example. So I hope you guys kind of understand that. Also, sold individually. You don't want someone to be able to come over here and sign up for like eight seats when it's just one person. So you might want to limit it to one purchase per order. So this is a good example of when you would actually use the sold individually. After that, we've got linked products, which again, I'm going to go over these at the very end of creating products because it's just adding on. And then under attributes, we're not going to add any attributes. Now, again, you can get creative. If you wanted to add attributes to this, you know, this digital class, you could. You could say add and then maybe you could say like this is the 8 a.m. and this is the 8 p.m. Or, you know, this is the Monday class and this is the Tuesday class. You could do whatever you want here. That's what I'm trying to say is you can get kind of creative with how you use these attributes and how you use these products. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at a regular price, $200. It's virtual. Done. We can go down here to the short description and maybe type something out. Sign up now. This is the best men's grooming online course you'll ever need. Okay. So our digital product is actually done. Like it's, it's very easy and simple to create one of these digital products. You can also go to the advanced tab and maybe say something like, thanks for signing up for this course. Please check your email for the confirmation with instructions on how to join and the Zoom link, right? You might want to add a purchase note when you're creating a digital product. So now that that's done, we can go over here to the right hand side and we can maybe say something like that. Put a bunch of tags in there, whatever you can think of, anything that relates to this product. So when they search for it, they find it. Now we can add a category. Let's add a new category and say something like, I don't know, online classes. And then we can say add new category. And again, it'll automatically add it. And we've checked that box. We can, we can add it into multiple categories if we want to, obviously, but we're going to leave it in that one. And then after we've done the tags, we can come up here and add the product images. So let's go over here and I've got to upload my files from my computer. And so my product image is going to be the main one that I made, which was just a very simple image with some text on it. And so here it is, this one right here. I'll click on set product image. All right, so three hour online barber class. Now let's make a product gallery. We'll go over here to upload files again, or not upload because I uploaded all three of them. They're already in my library. There we go. And we're done. We can go up here to the top right corner and click on publish. And just like that, our product is live. So let's go ahead and go over here to the store tab and take a look at it. Same thing that we always do. And here is our digital product. And so you can see it, three hour online barber class. You can click on it right here. Everything else is exactly the same as the simple product. We've got the short description right here. You know, sign up now. This is the best grooming online course that you'll ever need. Uh, the description and everything here. But then also we can click on add to cart right here. And then we can view the cart. And right now I won't be able to purchase it, but if I proceed to check out and purchase it, because we don't have a payment method available yet, we haven't set up our, our payment methods. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in a later step in the video, don't worry. But then you would place order and, it, and then when you do, right here is where it would display that purchase note. The one that says, hey, check your email for the confirmation with instructions on how to join and with the Zoom link. And so that would pop up after they click on checkout. But I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this from my cart. All right, my cart is empty and I'll close the store. Okay. So that is how you create a digital product. It's really easy. It's practically the same thing as a simple product. You're just not dealing with shipping and inventory. So now that we're done with this one and we can see that it's really just a simple product, but you just check a box and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And so the next digital or the next product is also the digital product, but this one is called the downloadable product. And so a downloadable product is basically the same thing as a digital product, but you can download it, right? So it could be something like an ebook or maybe it's uh, downloadable presets. It could be uh, you're selling a downloadable video. That's like a video tutorial on how to do something, whatever it is, that's what you're gonna be doing here. So let's go back over here to the add new button right here. And you guys already know the drill. We're going to add a title, a description, and a short description. So now we can do the same thing as a digital product. We're going to leave it on the simple product right here, and we're going to go over to downloadable instead and click on it. And yes, you guessed it. That's pretty much the only difference between the digital and the downloadable. 
you just click this box and then now you have a downloadable file. You have to add it to your website so that people can download it from your site. That's it. So we can again set the regular price. Let's say $75 because that's what I said in the short description down here. You guys already know the sale price and you can schedule it. I'm going to skip over that. We've got the downloadable file. And so this can be, this is where you will update the file they download. So if you've got those Lightroom presets or you've got, you know, that ebook that you have, you want to upload that file right now. So you click on it, you can title the file name. So let's just say ebook, just like this. And then you would have the file URL, or you can just literally choose the file from your computer. So go to upload files, select files, and then you can select whatever it is. Uh, I guess we could just use an example as like, let's just <laughs> pick an image, I guess. And now WordPress has uploaded your file to your library, created a hyperlink to reach that file, and then put it right here for you. Okay, and then you can add multiple files if you want to have like a group, you know, like a bunch of files. Like maybe they get an ebook plus something else, something else, whatever. You can also set a download limit as well as a download expiry. So the download limit right now is unlimited, but you might not want to say that someone can download this ebook a billion times. Maybe he can only download it twice. You know, maybe the first time it got corrupted or maybe he accidentally deleted it from his computer. And so you want to be a nice guy and let him download it twice or maybe three times. And then you can also set a download expiry. So maybe it never expires and he's got three or maybe it expires after one year, right? So number of days before the download link expires, you'd have to do it in days. So if it's one year, you'd have to do 365 days, right? Uh, but maybe it expires after three days. So you get three days to download your book, right? Uh, I think when you're on Amazon Prime and you're looking at Prime Video and you rent a movie, you only get two days to watch it or something like that, and then it expires. It's the same thing here. So you've got the download limit is three, download expiry or expiration date is three days. Okay, so now that we set all of that information up, that's pretty much the only thing that sets it apart as a downloadable product is you set the price, you have the download ready, and then you can say how much they can do, right? Okay, so we finished all this on the left-hand side. Let's go over to the right. We've got the product image. So I'm gonna click on it and select my file that I have ready to go. Again, just an example. So we'll set the product image. Scroll on down here and we can enter in a new category and let's just say that this is eBooks. And then we can add some tags. Okay, and now that we're done with all of that, we can go up to the top and click on Publish to save our work and obviously make it live on our website. Now that it's updated, uh, let's go and look at the live preview. So I'm going to go over to the store, and there it is. Levi Hagen, the little downloadable product. Uh, you could, Of course, this would be a totally different title, as you guys know. But there it is. We click on it, and you'll notice there's my short description again. I've got my Add to Cart button. They can look at my image in zoomed detail if they want to. Obviously, they can click on it as well and look at it, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, maybe we'd have the description of like everything that's included in the ebook or all the chapters, maybe like a table of contents, whatever you guys want. Again, this is an example, but I just want to show you guys when you edit things on the back end, where do they show up on the front end, right? Okay, so let's close out of the store, and then we can also close out of this tab as well. We're back on the dashboard, and then we can go back to products, and let's click on add new again. So now that we've done the downloadable product, we've also done the digital, the variable, and the simple, we can move on to the next one, and this is the affiliate product. All right, so let's go over to the new tab we just opened, and let's call this affiliate product. We'll scroll on down. We've got our description, control or command V. Scroll on down. Interested in this product? Then buy it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just playing around with you guys now. But there's our short description, and again, this is where you'd put information about your product, but I'm just doing this for fun, obviously because uh, you guys already know what it looks like and where it goes on your store. So from here, we're going to go over to simple product and let's go down to external or affiliate product because that's really what it is. It's an external product. It's not something that you're selling. You're selling somebody else's product. That's what an affiliate product is. I'm just going to pick a random product on Amazon real quick. We'll come over to this product. Just it's the first one that I see. And then I would say, where is it? Get a link, click on text. You just copy, control C, go over to your website. Product URL right here, done. That's it. Uh, obviously, now we're going to set a price and everything like that, which the price has to reflect how much you're selling you know, on Amazon. I have to copy their price, $45.40, just like this. So now that you have this, the button text says buy product right now, but I can set this to do whatever I want, buy on Amazon, so that you guys will see wherever you see the words buy on Amazon, you know it's because I changed the button text, right? Let's set our product image. Again, this is just for an example, okay? So we'll do that, and we'll say publish to save my work. 
All right, and now the affiliate product is published on our website, so let's go take a look. All right, and here's my affiliate product right here, and you can see the button says buy on Amazon. But now, uh, you can click on the product, obviously. There's no add to cart button, though. So basically, whenever there's an affiliate marketing product on your website, they have to click on the button, and no matter what, it takes them straight to Amazon, just like this. And so now, you'll notice that the, the link is huge, as you can see. This is your affiliate link, and so this is how Amazon knows that you're the one who brought this customer to buy this product right here. And so now, whenever they buy it, so like a one-time purchase and they say buy now, you will get a commission from Amazon for selling this product. So I'll close out of this tab. There we go. All right, so now that we have the affiliate product done, we can move on to the last one, which is a grouped product. And so you guys already know the drill. I'm going to go back over here to uh, all products right here, and then let's go ahead and click on add new. All right, and then you guys already know what I'm going to call it. It's going to be called the grouped product. All right, so group product right here. So a grouped product is basically you're selling this as a combo package or something like that. You're going to take a couple different products on your website, and you're going to sell them all as one, as like a bundle. Uh, so maybe this is like you have a course on your website that teaches people how to trim hair, and then you also have a trimmer on your website. And so you can maybe make a grouped bundle product where you're selling the trimmer and the online class because they need one for the other. And so this would be a good example of what you would do for a grouped product. So the one that I'm going to be doing, let's, uh, let's do grouped like that, grouped product like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the description, control V. Again, it's just the dummy text, right? Scroll on down here and let's do that short description. Honestly, I'm just going to paste my short description like this and then I'm just going to trim out a little bit so it's a smaller short description or whatever. Okay, so the way that you make this a grouped product, we're going to click right here and actually select it right here. Perfect. So a grouped product is almost just as simple as a simple product. Uh, we don't even have to manage inventory because the inventory should be managed by the individual products. Uh, and so it's automatically going to do that. But we can make an SKU for this one. I think we're up to like 10. So one, zero, something like this. And then we're going to go to linked products. Now you'll notice that linked products, we've got grouped products right here. So it's no longer upsells and cross sells. Uh, it's just grouped products. This is how we're going to be doing this product. And so in this little search bar, you're going to type in the titles of the other products that you have, and they'll start to pop up. I went ahead and off camera created three simple products. Well, I created uh, two more on top of it. So if I type in simple, you'll see I've got simple product, simple two, and simple three. And then we're going to click on all of them. So let's do the simple product. Simple two, and simple three, just like that. And you can select whichever products you want to have on here. I just did simple products, so it's really easy to understand. But if I wanted to, I could put the variable product in here. Easy peasy, just like that. Or maybe I want, let's see, the digital product. And I could select that one as well. You just have to search the title of the product, and you can enter it in here. And then you can, of course, always remove them by just clicking on the X. All right, so after you're done entering in all of the products that you want to be grouped into this one little bundle, you're good to go. We can go over here to the right-hand side and do our categories as well as our images, and we're set. So I can set a product image, and you might want to have a separate image for this. Um, I'm just going to use one of the product images again because why not? So I'll just use this one, I guess, and say select. All right, and so now that I've got an image, I could also enter in a gallery. Uh, I didn't create a special image for this one, which I wanted to do that for you guys, just to make it very intuitive for you guys to understand, okay, so this image was for this product. So this is going to be what shows up by default when I'm looking at my store page, and you'll see this in just a second. And then I'll have some images down here. You might want to literally just take the pictures from uh, the other products and use them as your product gallery here. Uh, so, for instance, I would use these three images because those are the ones that I used for the other products. And so those would be my gallery images. And so this is like my special... Here, I'll, I'll make it a special one. Let's make it something other than the product, even though it should be the product. Let's do... I don't know. Let's just pick one. I'm going to do this one. And we'll say select product image. Okay. So this would be like your special picture specifically. Like maybe it even has text on the screen that says, this is a bundle or something like that. And then these are the product images that are included with this bundle, if that makes sense. We can come down here and add a new category if you want. We can make it bundles or packages or something like that. All right, and then we can go down here and add whatever tags we want, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip that now. So let's click on publish to save our work and make it live, and we'll go check it out on the website. All right, so I'm gonna open up the store on a new tab just like this. And so now we'll scroll on down. There's my grouped product right here. And so you'll see it says view products, and so we can click on it. You can't just add it to cart yet. You click on it. 
And then you can select how many of each of these products you want, and then you click on Add to Cart, and it's basically going to say it's anywhere from 32 to 100 because one of them is $100 and one of them is $32. And so basically what happens is uh, it's just going to give this range to tell people, hey, that's what you know is the cost of some of the products in here. You'll come in here and you'll say, oh, I want three of these, maybe one of these, and two of these. And you say Add to Cart. All right, and then you can view the cart, and it'll individually add the price for each one of those just like this. So it basically just saves your customers time if you know that they're going to want multiple products together. Like if you have linked products, you know, the, the same example of like the trimmer with the online trimming class. So anything can go when it is a group product. You can, of course, just make it into whatever you need to. This is just to show you exactly how it works. So again, whenever you're back on the page, as you add your quantity, it's going to automatically input those numbers into their cart. And then you can still, in the cart, make the changes here, and it'll just update the cart like this. So nothing's set in stone. All right, guys, and so that is the grouped product. Pretty simple. We'll close out of that guy, make sure it's all saved, and we can close out of this tab as well. So let me make this change really quickly for you guys. We're going to go down to settings here, and then we're going to go down to permalinks. Okay, and so now under permalinks, you'll see that we're using a custom structure. We're going to go back over to post name it's a much clearer permalink. So now instead of all of this gibberish back here, it's just gonna say leviesproducts.com slash sample post. That's it, uh, or whatever you're on. So as soon as I click save changes, you're gonna see this is so much clearer. So right now it's all of this right here. Click on save. Let's close out of this tab and uh, refresh our store page. Now it just says shop dash two. It's a lot more clear. And if I go to a product, let me go here to a product really quickly. We'll click on, uh, let's do simple product. It's going to say levihagen.com slash product slash simple product. It's just so much more intuitive and easy to follow rather than all of this random information back here. So it's a lot better in my opinion. And we'll go back to the dashboard. All right, guys, now we've completed all of the products. You should have, if you were following along, at least six products on your website. We've gone through the simple product, the variable, digital, downloadable, affiliate, and grouped. So now that we've done all of that, before we move on to upsells and cross-sells, I want to actually take the time to update our homepage because I don't know about you, but I am all about looks. And so I'm going to go visit the site really quickly. You'll notice that still no products are going to be displayed on the page. Just like this, you'll see new arrivals aren't there. As well as down below where it says explore accessories, there's nothing here. And that's bothering me. Now that we actually finally have products on our website, I want to go ahead and make sure they're displayed on the website. So let's do it. We're going to go over here and edit the page with Elementor. And again, uh, if you weren't paying attention while I was talking, all I did was go up here and click here to open my store on a new tab. From here, we're going to click on edit with Elementor. All right. And then I'm going to close out of this little ribbon at the bottom. So let's scroll on down to the first one, which is new arrivals and click on this short code widget. You can either right click on it and say edit short code or just click on it in general and it'll open it up here on the left. Now you'll notice over here on the left hand side that it's a whole bunch of code and in the beginning you'll probably notice that I said something along the lines of you don't need any coding to know how to build this website and this is true. Don't worry, we're not going to be getting in here and making a whole bunch of coding and stuff like that. All we're going to do is change this featured category. You'll notice that it's just a category that's being pulled from our website and the old category is bicycles. So all we have to do is come in here and change that text with whatever our categories are. And so let's go over here to the dashboard. And we'll go to products right here, and then we can hover over categories. I'm going to open it up on a new tab. So I still have Elementor open, and now on another tab, I've got my products categories. And so you'll notice that bicycles right here has zero products in it because we didn't set anything up in there because obviously we're not selling bicycles. So I'm actually going to delete this one as well as their other one, which I think is what? Accessories. Here we go. So they're the only two categories that have zero products in them. And so after I've checked both of those boxes, you can click delete individually if you want to, but I check both of the boxes and go to delete in bulk actions and then click apply. Perfect. So now all we have are the categories that we created while we were making those products, if you guys remember on the right hand side. So let's create one and we'll just call it featured, right? So this is the featured category, featured products. And so now I'm going to go and enter in the slug, which is just featured again, but with the lowercase. And I'm actually going to copy and paste this. So control C or command C if you're on Mac. And so now I can enter in a description. I can also make this a subcategory by choosing which parent category. So if I want this under Cologne, I could, but I'm not going to. And then when I'm done, I can click on add new category. Perfect. You'll notice category added up here. And also there it is. So now how do you add products to this category? Well, let's go over here to my products tab. 
And remember, I still have Elementor open because I'm just trying to put my products on the front page. But I'm being creative here. I'm creating a special category just so that I can have four products on my front page, right? And so we'll come down here. And now I've got all my products. I'm going to select this one, this one, this one, and let's say my affiliate product, right? So now that I've, actually, let's not do the affiliate product. I'm going to do simple two, something like this. Okay, so now that I've got four products selected, I'm going to go over to bulk actions and say edit. And then I click apply. So now I'm editing all four of these products at the same time. I'm going to go over here to categories and just put them into my featured category, just like that. All right, and now I'm going to click on update to save my work. Perfect. So that didn't pull them out of the categories they were originally in. It just added them to an additional category, right? So now they're in online classes and featured. Now it's an ebook and it's also featured, right? So now that we've done that, all we have to do is inside of this short code in Elementor, this is a category. Let's put our featured category right here. Controller Command V because I copy pasted it. And now you'll notice that all your products pop up just like that. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Now I'm going to click on update to save my work. Also, if it didn't automatically propagate, you can always click apply because this is just to uh, apply the changes you just made to the code. But I'm going to click on update to save. And so maybe we should change this from new arrivals to something like featured. Let's double check that this isn't featured. Okay, so explore accessories. So let's go up here. And we'll say that this is new arrivals. Let's say featured instead, right? Because I created a featured category just so that I can put products on my front page. And so now that that category is created, anytime I create a new product and I want it to instantly show up here under featured, I can just select that category. So it's that simple. We'll click on update to save our work. All right. So now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and close out of Elementor. That was just bothering me. I wanted to make sure we had products on the page now. So now it looks all pretty and, and uh, congruent and everything. I'm going to close out of Elementor. And now I'm back on my products tab here. Step number five is upsells and cross sells. Nothing too fancy. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to my simple product here and click on edit. Okay. We're going to scroll on down and go over to link products. Now link products, you remember it's got upsells and cross sells. Upsells are going to appear on the actual product page. And then cross sells are going to appear on the checkout page. So let me show you guys what I mean. First, we have to add a product. So the same thing as a group product, you guys remember under grouped products right here, you just type whatever the title is that you want to add. So let's say variable product, and then I can add variable product right here. And so now this product will appear as a, hey, you might also be interested in kind of product. So let me go ahead and update and I'll just show you guys. It'll be easier if I just show you. All right. And so now I'm going to preview the changes by clicking on this button right here. When your clients go to this product page and they're about to add it to cart, they'll scroll on down and they'll see this right here. You might also like this variable product that I have on my website. That's all it is. This is an upsell right here. And so it basically just puts other products available below the product they're looking at, right? So it's on the product page. Okay. So now what happens if they add it to cart, right? Well, let's close out of this tab. And then I'm also going to add a cross sell. So let's go down to linked products and let's do a cross sell. So instead of that, let's do a different one. Let's do the digital product. So this will appear on the checkout page. Let's click on update to save and let's click on preview. So now under the simple product, they have a upsell right here down below. And it says you may also like, right? Like you might also like this variable product. Okay. And so if they add it to cart, which it looks like it's already in the cart with $470 worth of other stuff. Let's click on this and view our cart. Here is the cross sell right here. You may also be interested in this product that I have. And so you're basically just trying to flash your products in front of your client as much as possible to see if they're going to be, hey, you know, maybe uh, the simple product is cologne. And then uh, this is another product that's related to cologne. I don't know. Just think of something. Or maybe this is the trimmer and then this is the online class. And so if they add the trimmer to cart, you always have the online course about trimming as a cross sell. So that when they get to their cart, it says, hey, you just bought a trimmer. Do you want to learn how to use it? I've got a class right here that shows you how to do it, right? So it probably would have been a better example that I actually use the uh, a trimmer as a simple product. I probably should have done that for you guys. But you guys get the idea. That's all it is. So anytime you want to add an upsell or a cross-sell, you just edit the individual product. You go over to linked products, and then you can add whatever you want right here. And you can add as many as you want. So instead of digital, let's do downloadable. So we'll add two down here and let's add like three over here. So we've got variable. Let's add the other two simple products. All right. And so now we'll click on update to save. 
and then we can preview as well. And now if I scroll down, you'll see that there's many upsells. So I've got multiple. I've got one, two, and three, because remember, I put these two as well. Let's go over here to shop, and we will add the simple product to my cart, because that's the one that I added the cross sells to. Let's go ahead and look at the cart. And there they are. We've got you may be interested in, and then it's saying you might be interested in this product or that product because they're related to cologne somehow. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to remove this from my cart. And then I can close out of this tab. And then I can also close out of this tab because we've already updated and saved, so we're good to go. All right, so now that we've handled all of our products, we've updated our homepage, and we've also dealt with upsells and cross-sells, we can move on to step number six, which is the header and footer. So in order to edit your header and footer, we have to open up our website on a new tab. Actually, there's two ways of getting to it. We can either go onto this new tab and click on Customize right here, or we can go over to the Appearance tab and click on Customize right here. Both Customize buttons do the exact same thing. I always just tend to open my site on a new tab. And so we'll click on customize right here. And so once we open it up, you'll notice that on the right hand side, we've got that preview because we're able to make changes on the left hand side, similar to Elementor, uh, and then see those changes live on the right. Okay. So in order to edit the header, there's two things that you can do. You can always click on the blue pencil icon whenever you're hovering over whatever you want to edit. So if I want to edit this navigation menu, I can click on this pencil. If I want to edit the logo, I can click on this pencil. And if I do, it'll take me straight to where I need to edit. So now it says logo right here, but I'm going to click on this back button. Or you can just go to those menus on the left-hand side. And so I want you guys to know where everything is and not just know how to click on the pencil. I just wanted to show you guys that's a shortcut if you need it. So in order to edit the header, we're going to go over to header builder, just like this. And then from here, we've got site title and logo, cart, button, and primary menu. And so there is your site title and logo, but it's just the logo. Here's your navigation menu. This is your cart and this is your button, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. And they're also laid out in the exact same orientation down below. This is kind of like a graphical orientation. And so you'll notice this is drag and drop, right? This is my logo right here. This is my menu. If I want my logo dead center with my menu like this, I can do that. And then I can maybe drag my menu down below like this. And so now I've got like my logo here and menu right here. Or maybe I want my logo over here as well, which would look weird, but I can do that. You'll see that you can move them wherever you want, but I want my logo all the way on the left and my menu in the center. So it makes one fluent line. But you guys can get pretty creative with your header building just because they give you three different layers as well as all of this information that you can mess around with. So let's go ahead and change the logo first. We can close out of these two tabs, but we're going to be opening a new tab and search for a website called Logo Maker. Just make sure you leave off the E. So it's logomaker.com without the E right there. Okay. And then from here, we're going to click on Start My Design. Okay. It's going to try and give you a little tutorial, but just click out of it because I'm going to show you guys how to use this. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got our basic functions. We've got our text function right here, and so I click on it, and it's going to add some text. Our shapes right here, and so I could click on a square, and it'll add a square. And then I've got the paint bucket. Up here in the top left corner, I've got the search bar where I can search from over 3 million different graphics, all for free. Can you believe that? You click right here. Tons and tons of different graphics. I can click on any of these categories like badges, decorative, sketches, whatever I want to do. Or I could just search something like camera. And then I get a bunch of camera icons, right? And there's millions and millions of these. Click on back to canvas in the top right corner and you'll go back here. On the right hand side, I've got my saturation square with my color wheel, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> and then I've got my opacity right here. So basically make something more transparent or opaque. Okay, so now that you guys have kind of an understanding of where everything is, it's really easy to use. Let's go ahead and create the logo that we have for this website. So I'm going to go over here and search for like a lotion bottle or something. And you'll notice that when you're looking for an icon, maybe the perfect one doesn't pop up immediately and you have to kind of search different options. So maybe a lotion bottle doesn't work. Maybe it's like, uh, maybe I should search for cologne. Something like this, right? But I'm kind of looking for something like towards men's grooming because that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm selling like shaving cream, colognes, trimmers, those kinds of things. So let's go back to lotion bottle. I think this one looks good. It's pretty simple and that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on this one. All right. And let's go ahead and use, you'll notice that once it highlights, uh, you can just drag on the corners like this and I can resize it. I can click on this little arrow right here and I can rotate if I want to. Control or Command Z to undo. But I'm just going to, let's see, shrink it up a little bit, something like this. I'm going to also search for a rose. And so you'll notice there's a ton of different roses here as well. It's pretty cool that they have so many icons that you can use. I'm going to use this one right here. And you'll notice, let me change the color of this rose real quick. You'll notice that if I put the rose over here, it's on top of the bottle. 
if you ever want it to be on the bottom or something like that, uh, well, first I'm gonna have to drag this this up a little bit because here's the layers tab I forgot to mention right here. There we go. Now you can see it. There's the layers tab. So I can drag which one of these I want over the other. So let's drag this one up to the top like this, and now it's in front. So that's how you change, uh, like how you can send things to the back. Okay, and so now I'm actually gonna change this to be the same color as the red that's on our website, which is right here. And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to click on publish to save my work really quickly before I back out of the header builder. And then I'm gonna go click on the back button right here, go to global and colors. And so this is my color right here that is uh, activating this button. And in a minute, I'm gonna go over these uh, so you guys completely understand it. But just for now, so that our logo matches the color, I'm gonna click on it and then copy my, uh, my code right here. So just click on it and it copies it, right? So now we can go back to our header builder. Back on my logo, I can just paste that hex code right here. And so now it's the same color as my website. So now I'm going to drag this over and let's go ahead and shrink it by a lot. So something like this. And I'll put it dead center on the product. I can use my arrow keys to make tiny adjustments like this whenever I have something highlighted. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that that's done, let's add some text. So I'm gonna click right here and I'll say Levi Hagen in all caps. And then I'm gonna do another one. So click on text again. And this time, let me move it out of the way. I'll say grooming products, just like that. Okay, so the first text, what I'm gonna do is change it to black by clicking on my square and dragging it over into the black area. And then I can go over here to my designer picks and I can choose my font. So these are like categories. And then I can maybe do like a traditional serif or something like that. So something like this actually looks perfect. But once you choose your category, so like scary or funny or handwriting or something like that, once you pick your category, you can come in here and choose what text you want from that category. But actually this one looks really good, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna center that text up like this and maybe make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is do the same thing to this text right here. I'm gonna drag it underneath and center it. And then I'm going to make it black. And then actually, before I make any other changes, I forgot I want it to make, uh, I want it to say men's grooming products. So uh, men's grooming products. And then I'm gonna click on this little icon right here and that's the styles button. And so now I can change the letter spacing like this. Watch this and make it really wide. I think that looks really cool. And then I'm just gonna drag this down and shrink it. And so actually I'll change the styles. I'm gonna reduce the letter spacing just a little bit, uh, but I'm gonna shrink the text up. And then I'll just center it under my uh, logo here. So Levi Hagen, uh, Levi Hagen men's grooming products. I think that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and use my arrow keys and just move it over just a little bit like this. Okay, I think it looks good. So this is the logo for my website. I think it's, uh, I'm happy with it. I'm actually gonna shrink up that bottle a little bit. So I'm gonna click and drag. So I highlight the bottle and the rose and then I can shrink them both together. All right, I'm done. When you're happy with your logo and you think it looks really good and you're ready to use it, you're gonna go over here to the save logo icon in the top right corner. And I know what you're gonna think. You're gonna see this button right here that says processing and download the file, and then you're gonna get charged for it. You can't use this button for the high resolution. You're gonna say, no thanks, I'll take the low resolution file right down here. And it's going to say, do you accept the terms and services and stuff like that? And we're going to say, yes, download the free low resolution file. Okay. And so now I've downloaded it to my computer. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to highlight everything except for the rows. So let's find out which one is the rows. Okay. So it's this clip art right here. So I'm going to highlight everything, hold the controller command key, and then clip on uh, the rows. So it diselects the rows. And I want everything to be white. And then I'm going to click on the rows and change it to black. And so you guys will see what I mean in a second, trust me. But you also want a white logo because what if you put your logo onto a dark background with all that black text? You won't be able to see it. So you also want an inverted color of that logo. So I'm going to click on save, low resolution file, download. All right. And then last but not least, we're gonna highlight everything. Let's just make it black so it's easy to see for now. I'm actually gonna delete everything except for the rows. So controller command, and then I'm gonna hold it and click on the rows. And I'll just delete everything else. So I've got the rows right here. 
So I'll probably just make it a lot bigger, something like this, and I'll probably make it uh, the same color that the website was. So controller command V, and I'm gonna paste that code again. And then I can come over here to the square, and I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go to, uh, let's see, the color, and I'll just change it to black, and then I'm gonna drag it below the rows. All right, so now I've got my rows over the square. I'll center the two of them like this. I'll select the square and make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. It's a terrible site icon. I'm just doing something for an example. Uh, you guys might want to make something a little bit better. But the site icon, what I'm talking about, is this little guy right here. So every time you go to a website, it's got this little icon on, on top of the tab. And that's your site icon or your favicon. Uh, some people call it that. Uh, so I'm creating a very basic one. But I am going to click on the square one last time. Go to the style tab. And then I'm going to do the roundness on the edges. You see this? And so I'm going to make it kind of like a round edge. All right, and then I'm going to click on Save Logo, download the low resolution, and download for free. Okay, we're done. Now you can close out a logo maker. You don't need it anymore. And then we're going to go over here to Site Title and Logo. So you'll notice the logo is right here. All you have to do is click on Change. We'll go to Upload Files, Select Files, and we'll go over to our Downloads folder, which is where they are. All right. And so I'm going to download the, let's do, go ahead and download all three actually. So I'm going to take all three and click on open. Okay, so I've got all three of my logos on the website. I'm going to choose the black one because that's my main logo and I'm going to say select. It's going to ask if I want to crop it. I'm going to say skip that. Perfect. And now my logo is there. But again, see how when it's on a dark background, you can barely see it. Uh, first of all, let's make it a little bit bigger. And the way that you do that is with this logo width right here. But you see how hard it is to see? Well, let's go ahead and insert a transparent white logo. So basically, the logo, this is the main logo for your website, but anytime you're using a transparent header, you want to use a different logo. A transparent header just means that instead of having a white background on this banner up here, it's you can see the image behind the header, okay? And which is like this blue rectangle up here. And so anytime you have a transparent header and you want to have that secondary white logo for a dark background, You'll go over here to Customize Transparent Header, and it's going to ask, do you want to use a different logo for the transparent header? And you're going to say yes. And then you get to select a secondary transparent logo. And so you'll choose uh, the white one right here and say choose image. And now you'll see that the white one is popping up. And you can see it way easier than you can see uh, the black one. Okay, so now that we have our white logo up here, the last thing to do is to change that site icon up top. And the way that you do that is we're going to click on the back button. We'll go to the header builder. And under site title and logo, where we just put this logo, at the very bottom you'll see site icon. And so we'll click on this guy. And then we can upload our icon. And a site icon, the best icon you can make is a small one-by-one -one ratio image. So basically like a square is what I mean. And so this is 200 by 200, right? So it's a, it's a square. We'll say select. And then we can skip the cropping if we want to. And now you'll see that my site icon is now up top. So that's pretty cool. So now that we've done the uh, logos, I'm going to click on Publish to save my work. And then let's go back. So now under the header builder, let's play around with the navigation menu. I'm not going to really play around with this. I think it's perfectly fine the way it is. But I want to show you guys how you can edit your menu. And it's really easy. So the first thing that you can do is the design of the menu, which basically is just the color. And the way you do that is you go over to Transparent Header because it's activated. And then you can go to the Design tab. And then right here you've got, where is it? Here it is. The Menu Color right here, you've got the text and link. So this is basically like the normal color and then the hover color. And so right now it's, uh, it's like this white color and then it turns a little bit brighter white, which I don't understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the white color right here for the normal. And then we're going to, for the hover color, select this red one, which is our main theme color. And then we'll click on Publish to save. And so now what that did was anytime I hover over any of these, you'll see that it uses the same color as my website, just like this, which is pretty cool. And then also, whichever page I'm actively on is going to be highlighted red. So if I go to the About Us page, by clicking on it, by the way, this is a live preview. Now you'll see About Us is, is red, right? So it just highlights whatever the active page is. So that's pretty cool. Now you guys know how to kind of play around with the color. You can click on the back button and do it again. If you want to change up the actual menu, we can go over here to menus at the very bottom. 
And now you'll notice that you have a bunch. We've got account, collection, main menu, and useful links. The other three, uh, so account, collection, and useful links, you'll notice they're down here in the bottom. So there's useful links, our collection, and account. And we'll get to these in a second, so don't forget this menu tab. But we'll get to these in a minute when we start editing the footer. But this one is a navigation menu. And then these down below are also, that's a navigation menu, that's a navigation menu, and that's a navigation menu, right? And so a navigation menu is basically just a list of clickable links. That's all it is. And so over here under main menu, that's this one up here. You can title it whatever you want. As you can see, the default template just called it a main menu, but you can, you can call it like the navigation menu if you want. Okay, so this is the navigation menu, just for uh, understanding purposes for you guys. Uh, the clients or the people who visit your website aren't going to see that title. It's just you. So we'll click on publish. Now, every once in a while when you're making changes, it'll glitch out like this. And so right now the, the menu is invisible for some reason. Don't worry. Just try refreshing the page, but make sure you save your work first. So let's try refreshing and see if that fixes it. Yeah, there we go. See, my menu reappeared. So let's go back to menus and navigation menu. So the way that you can edit this menu, it's really simple. Um, you can drag and drop whichever one of these you want, so you can change the order. So if I want shop to be first, I can drag this above home like this. And just like that, now shop is in front and home is second, right? And then I can drag it back up like this. If I want this to be a sub-menu, so like I hover over about us, and then contact would be a sub-menu, you can drag it underneath what you want, and you see that dotted line that moves and lets me know where I'm about to place it? If it's all the way over to the... Here, let me go up here. If it's all the way to the left like that, it means it's going to be a, a main point. But if I move it below and it's over here to the left kind of indented, you'll know that it's going to be a sub point. So if I make this a sub point of about us, you see how there's a drop down and then here's contact. And you'll notice that the normal color is white and the hover color is red. So you might want to go in there and change that if you were going to do it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So let's go ahead and move it over like that. And you'll notice that it comes back out. Now, if you want to remove one, you just click on it, and then at the very bottom, you'll see remove, and it'll delete this one. So let's delete the contact navigation point. And now it's not even there, right? If you want to add one, you're going to go over here to add items. And then, let me close that. You have all of these different things that you can use. So basically, it's going to ask, what do you want to link to? Do you want to link to a product category? Uh, do you want to link to, here, actually, uh, the products right here? Because you've got all these products. So maybe you want a product to be up here in the navigation menu. Or maybe you want a page, like the, the contact page. So let me do the contact page first. So under pages, I select contact. And it's just going to automatically add it. And so now when you click on this button, it takes you to the contact page. But what if I want a product to be up here, right? You can do that. You can go to add items. You can go down to products. And let's just say the simple product. Click on add. And now it's called simple product right? So I can go over here and click on simple product and it's literally going to take me to the product just like this. So you can put whatever you want up in this navigation menu within reason, but normally this is just going to be pages on your website. So I'm going to click on simple product and remove it. All right. So once you're done making whatever changes you want, just click on publish to save your work and you're done. And also notice you see how this is not using a transparent header. It's actually got a background color and it's automatically using my black logo. That's pretty cool. Just wanted to show you guys that. Let's click back on the home page here. Okay, so back on the home page, we've got our navigation menu and we've edited that and then we can also edit our logo. So now you guys know how to do that. Let's go over here to the shop button and the shop now button. So this is our cart and the shop, right? We'll go over here, click on the back button, go back to the header builder. We've got a button and a cart button. You can also click on the actual icons down here and it'll do the same thing. So if I click on cart, let's edit this first. You can choose what icon you want. I prefer this one, to be honest, because it's just more intuitive to me. It, it, that actually screams view my cart. So there it is. And then you can scroll on down here. You can display the cart count. And so that's like zero. And if I had two products, it would say two. So it tells you how many products are in there. You can turn that off or on by toggling the switch. And you can do the same thing by toggling that, that dollar amount right there. So I can also toggle this off and it's gone. And then I can go down here, my cart click action. Do I want it to drop down or slide in? This is the old version. If I do the drop down right here and I hover, it does this little drop down, which is what it used to do. I think it looks so much cooler with that slide in cart. It's so fancy and elegant. I love how that came with the new update. So we're going to click on this bad boy. And then now whenever you click on your cart, it does this cool active live cart right over here on the right side. I think that's so much better. 
And then after you do that, you can choose if you want it to be on the left or the right. So if I choose the left, and then I click on it, now it's going to open it over here. Completely up to you. I think it looks better on the right, personally. And then you can also play around with the, the cart width. And so basically, you can just make this uh, wider or thinner if you want. But I think the default width is just perfectly fine. Okay. So that's how you can edit the cart. Uh, you can also go to the design tab, and this is basically where you can change like colors and things like that. So if I go over here, I've got the cart color, which is just white, which is perfect because it's the same as this. But let's change that hover color to the red that's uh, part of our color palette for the website. Anytime it's got that globe icon, it means that it's using one of my global colors that we've established for the website. And again, we're going to get to this right after we're done with these buttons here. But... Uh, if you ever want to select a random color, you can. It's just not going to have that globe to tell you that this is uh, part of the website. So I'm going to click on the global color. And so now I've got the regular color is white. The hover is red. So now let's go ahead and play around with the button. So I'm going to click on the back button here. And then again, you can either click on button like this. Or you can click on the actual widget down here in the corner. And so you can change the text. So shop now. Maybe you want to say view our store or view all products or whatever you want. You can change your text here. And all we have to do is enter in our store link right here. And the way we do that is let's go ahead and just actually open up our shop page like we were about to do. And we'll just copy the hyperlink right here. Paste it in. And publish. And then the last thing I want to do is change that hover from black to the red. So let's go to the design tab. And you'll see the text color. It goes from black to white. And that's fine because when I go to a red color, I still want the text to be white, you see? Uh, so we'll leave the text color the way it is. But I want to change the background color to red. So I'm going to click on it and say red. That's it. So now when I hover, it hovers to red like this. All right, so let's click on publish to save my work. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is the global colors. It's not necessarily a header or a footer uh, thing that we're doing here, but it's in the same customizer. So it's inside of this Astra customizer. We're going to go over to global colors. If you want to change the color of your entire website, that's why I told you not to do it individually inside of Elementor, because this template is built to be changed in one place. So under global, because you want to make a global change to the entire site, we're going to go down to colors. And this is that color palette that you kept seeing me click on and use. So this is where we can change it. Watch this. If I change my color one right here, let's just say I want it to be blue. Here, let me copy this real quick so I can come back to it. If I want it to be blue, it's automatically going to change everything to blue. Now, these are still using the hover color of number two. So I would also click here, and then I would change this to something like that, right? And so now you'll see it goes to that color. But let me hit Control or Command Z. But I can go back to my blue, and I can click on these little, uh, this little toggle icon, and then I can paste it right here. So Control or Command V. Perfect. So this is how you can change the website color. And you can change this to literally whatever you want. If you want it to be neon green, now everything on the site is green. Do you see this? Even the bullet points changed, the button changed, scroll on down even further, everything is completely changed. And this is throughout the website. If I go to the shop page, everything's green. The header is green, all these buttons, all these links, everything. And so if I change it to pink, now it's all going to be pink. And so it's so easy to change the color of your website. You just always have to come back to your global colors. And you can completely rebrand by changing colors whenever you want. It's pretty sweet. I can make them yellow if I wanted to. Whatever you want to do. But I'm going to go over here and paste in my hex code so that it's the original color. Okay, so now that that's done, you can also change whatever colors you want here as well. And this is just a color palette. Uh, and then these are all of the link colors. So maybe I want to change my accent color. Instead of pulling from the red, I can change it. But I'm not going to mess with any of this. Because right now it's set up perfectly where all you have to do is change these two little colors. And everything is going to change. So let's just leave it the way it is. I'm going to click on publish to save. And go back. All right, so last but not least, let's edit the footer. So I'm going to go to the home page. And then I'm going to drop all the way down to the footer. Okay, and so in the footer, we've got these three navigation menus as well as this widget right here, which is literally just a, uh, a picture widget. So let me show you guys right now. I'm going to open up the footer builder just like this, and you'll see it's laid out just like the header builder. We've got widget one, which is this one. Widget two is this one. Widget three is this one. Widget four is that one right there. And then we've got copyright, which is this bottom left corner, and social, which is this bottom right corner. And so the social icons are really easy to edit. You literally click on it. And you'll see that there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. If you want to remove one, click on the X button. And if you want to add one, you have to find it in the list. So let's go to YouTube. 
and then you click add just like that. And so from here, you can, let's see, change the alignment, which honestly it's aligned to the right. It's perfectly fine where it is. You don't really need to make any of those changes. And it's also got the, the correct hover color. So it's white to red, which is perfect. And so that red will change with the same color changes that you guys made up above. So if you guys change the global colors, you're good to go. Now, if you want to actually edit these, the way that you do is you just click on it. And so it's Twitter. You would enter in your Twitter URL, like the, the link to your account. And that's all you do. And then you would click on Instagram and you'd put your Instagram account link right here. And then the same thing with YouTube. And if you have any of these other ones, if you wanted to put your email here, you could click on this one and say add. And it'll have like an email mail option. And then you can click here and put your email here. And so that's how you guys would do this. It's really simple on how to make those work. So we'll click back. The copyright's really easy. You click on it and you literally just type out whatever you want. They've got a little bit of short code here where the bracket has like the current year and so it's gonna be updated always to have the current year and all of that stuff. But you guys can literally type out whatever you want right here and it'll appear down there. All right. And then we've got these widgets here. Let's go ahead and click on the pencil icon cause it'll take me straight to uh, this image or I could literally just click on widget one and it's the exact same thing. And you'll see it's a picture. If you click on it, you can replace it with your own logo. So let's do that now. I'm gonna click replace and let's put in my white logo cause it's a dark background. And so I'll say add to widget. And just like that, now my image is in the footer. Pretty easy to do. So now these navigation menus here, I'm not gonna go in and create three additional navigation menus for you guys so that you have a whole bunch of examples. You guys already know how to edit a navigation menu and how to rename it. And so if you guys wanna edit these, you click on widget two. And so I'm editing the second one right here. And I'll click on it. I've got the title, which is useful links. And so that's how you can change this title right here. And then the menu, so that's what displays. That's just text right here. And then the menu is called useful links. So let's go take a look at that real quick. We'll go over to menus, useful links, and you'll see it's literally those four right there. Home, shop, about, contact. If you wanna add one, you can add, or if you wanna remove one, you click on it and remove, just like that. You can also change the title of it, right? And then, uh, so maybe this is something where instead of saying our collection, you could say maybe our product category. So let's actually edit this one. I'm gonna click on the edit button right here. So it takes me straight to it, right? And so you'll see it's mountain bike city specialty electric. I'm gonna remove all of these, which are custom links. Uh, a little trick for you, instead of having to click it and then hit remove every single time and then do that again, you can hit add items and then a little X appears. So let's delete all three of these. We'll remove that one. And then we can add our own product categories down here. So we could say featured, cologne, small, t-shirt, or something like that, just so that there's four. So maybe these are like your top four categories, right? And you could say publish to save your work. And now it's those four right there. Do you see how easy it is to change this? It's the same thing as when we were editing the navigation menu at the very top of the website up here. It's the exact same situation. Perfect. And we'll hit publish to save our work. And then that's how you would change the account one as well. I'll let you guys do that on your own. And then if you want to change those two titles, it's really easy. We'll just go back to the footer builder. And then we can edit like this one right here and say, instead of our collections, we could say categories, just like that. And then click publish to save your work. So you guys see how easy it is to change this. You can just change the titles up on top and then you can edit your navigation menus below. And it's a picture. Okay. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and click on this X button right here. And that should take me back to the dashboard, or I'm actually just going to close out of the tab just like this. And now that we're back on the WordPress dashboard, we can move on to step number seven, which is to customize your store. And so customizing the store is actually gonna be under the same customizer as we were just on. So we're gonna open up our store on a new tab and then click on customize again. Okay, so now on the store page, it looks like it automatically does it, that's cool. On the store page, we're gonna go over to WooCommerce and then we'll go over to the general tab and we'll just work our way down. So this is all the changes that you can make to your store. Under the general tab, we've got container layout and sidebar layout. And so right now it's on the right, but you can always choose to put it on the left if you want to. And then it just moves your sidebar over here to the left, as you can see, and then you can have no sidebar, but I'd recommend having a sidebar somewhere. I'm gonna put it on the right cause I like it over there. So I'm gonna click publish to save my work here. Okay, next we've got the product catalog, which is basically this, the page that we're on. Um, and so again, we've got the sidebar layout. I'm not sure why it shows it a second time, but uh, I like it over here on the right-hand side, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, we'll scroll on down and we've got the shop card design. So you can go for like bigger cards or this shop look, but personally, I just kind of like how this looks. It looks pretty standard to me. And so I'm gonna leave it just like this. And then you can change the amount of shop columns as well. So right now there's three. 
Uh, I could change it to four, and you'll see it'll display four products per page, but I think that's a little cluttered, so I'm gonna stick to three. And then you can also select how many products per page, so there's only 12, and then after that, you have to hit next. And so you guys can change that if you want to. And then other than that, you've got custom widths, and then you can kind of play around with the shop card. So these are the shop cards right here. And so I can change the category right now is on top, so it says featured category. I can choose to hide the category like this. And so now you'll notice that featured is gone. It doesn't say the categories anymore. Personally, I think this is perfectly fine to leave on its own as well, just by default. I think they do a good job of making it look good just by the stock template. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys you can play around with this. You can also move them around if you want to drag the title to be the first thing. Now it says the title is the first thing there. That's probably the only thing I'd do to change. Other than that, you can leave the stars there, but if you want to remove the ratings, you can always just hit this little button and it would hide the stars. Okay, so now that that one's done, we'll click on the back button here and then we can go to the single product page. And then if we click on a single product, so let's just open one real quick. You can choose if you actually have a sidebar. So the default is going to be no sidebar, but you can choose to still have a sidebar on the right-hand side. I don't think that's necessary. When you're looking at one product, you've already looked at all of them. And so I don't think the sidebar is too necessary there. But again, you can kind of play around with all of this. Right now it has the category on top. You can change the structure. And so maybe you want the title on top, something like this. And then maybe the category should go way down here with the meta information. And so it's underneath add to cart now. So you've got simple product, $100. I think the short description actually should be above the price, in my opinion. There we go. I think that looks really good. And then the rating can be down here as well by the meta information. Okay, and then after you've made adjustments to the structure, you can scroll on down here and you've got the sticky add to cart option, which is pretty cool. Right now, if I scroll down, I can't add it to cart if I was looking at all the information. You can enable this. And then now when I scroll, it asks if I want to add to cart and it adds this little uh, sticky header, which I think is pretty cool. As you scroll down, you can still add it to cart while you're looking through all of this information down here. So you can enable that if you want to. So now I'll click on publish to save and I'll click on the back button. And then we have the cart page as well, which there's not much that we can do here, but we can change the cart button text if we want to. So I can click on this right here and I can view my cart page. I can click on this and I can say instead of proceed to checkout, so when they open this and it says proceed to checkout down here on the right hand side, I can change this to say whatever I want to, but honestly I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Okay, and then we can go to the checkout page. And under the checkout page you can basically just decide what is optional and what is required. Uh, so like company name, address line 2, and all of this information, and then also you've got your little privacy policy here. So I'm not going to make too many changes there. Product images. You can mess around with your product image sizes, but I'm not going to play around with it because they're all maximized to be square images, but you can increase or decrease if you need to. Also pay attention to the one-to-one -one ratio. That's why I did these squares. I cropped all of my images beforehand so that they all fit into my website perfectly. That way I have no issues kind of like this where, you know, one button is sticking farther down. So I would probably change that title to just say add to cart as well or purchase or something like that. And then the store notice. Now, this is probably the thing that you'll use the most. I think store notices are fantastic. Basically, when you enable it by clicking on this checkbox, it's going to take whatever text you have right here and put it up as a banner on top of your website. And this is really important. I see people do this all the time. Um, right now, it says this is a demo store. For testing purposes, no orders shall be fulfilled. So it's kind of like a warning, like, hey, this website isn't done. Don't place any orders or anything. Uh, but you can have this have whatever you want. You could... Uh, you know, remove this text here and you could say, hey, 20% off all orders over $300, you know, something like that. And so when they're looking through the website, they're like, oh, wow, if I spend $300, I get 20% off, something like that. Or you could say, hey, we're going to be open on this holiday from this time to this time. I've seen people do that on their websites too with a store banner or store notice. And so this is how you do it. And then you can play around with the colors. Right now, it's just pulling the default color, which is this purple color, but you can, of course, change it to be whatever you want. Uh, maybe you want it to be your accent color. This is the text color. <laughs> so let's change that to white. And so we'll click on the back button. Let's click on publish to save our work. All right, so now that we're done with all of that, I'm going to close out of the customizer tab and go back to the dashboard. Because now that we've done that and our store is set up, everything's ready to go, we've got products on there, it's time to add payment methods to our website. So step number eight is to set up payment methods. And I'm going to show you how to add two different types of payment methods to your website. I'm gonna show you how to add credit card as well as PayPal. And then you guys can add others if you want to in the future. So let's get started with credit card first. So in order to go to your payment methods for WooCommerce, you're gonna hover over WooCommerce and then you're gonna drop down to the settings tab right here. And then we're gonna go over to the payments tab right here. 
And so now you can see the different types of payments that we can use on this website. And you'll notice discover other payment providers, Stripe and PayPal. So Stripe is what we're going to be using for credit cards and PayPal is obviously so that you can use PayPal as well. So we have two plugins to download. So let's go over to the plugins tab and then we'll click on add new. I'm going to open it up on a new tab and I am going to search for WooCommerce. And you'll see it right here, WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. So we basically have to have a way for Stripe to communicate with our website using WooCommerce. So we're going to click on Install Now and Activate. And then we're going to click on Add New one more time in the top left corner and search for WooCommerce one more time. And we're going to do the same thing but just over to the right using PayPal. So we'll click on Install and Activate. Okay, perfect. So now that we have those two plugins ready to go, we can close back out of this tab and go back to our WooCommerce payments. And if you didn't have it on a new tab, remember you just go to WooCommerce, click on Settings, and then click on Payments right here. All right, so now that we're in the payment methods, let's refresh this page. And now you'll notice we have a ton more options after we download Stripe and we download PayPal. So what we want to do is enable two of them. We want to enable Stripe with the credit card. So we've got two ways of setting Stripe up. We can say create or connect an account, or we can enter in our API keys and webhooks. And so I'm actually going to do the advanced version because it's just way faster for me. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So we're going to click on enter account keys right here. And all it's going to ask is for these three things right here. So in order to do that, we're going to go over to our Stripe account. And lucky us, they have a little hyperlink ready for us. And so now it's going to ask us to log into our Stripe account, which I don't have a Stripe account, so I'm assuming you guys don't either. And if you do, just log into it, of course. But if you don't, we're going to click on sign up. All right, and so now it's going to ask for our email, full name, and password. So we're just creating this with you guys, or uh, with Stripe. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, perfect. So now we are inside of our Stripe account. And so the few things I want to point out is this little toggle right here, view test data. And so we're going to be using this a lot, but before we can do anything really important inside of our account, we actually have to, as you can see, activate our account. So you can hover over testing data and literally just click right here and say activate your account. So let's click on it. And it's going to want us to verify our email so we can't continue until we do it. So I'm just going to open up my Gmail here and we'll activate the account. All right, and it's going to open us up a brand new dashboard so I can close out of these two tabs. Okay, so now activate payments on your account. So we have to fill out our business profile before we can start accepting payments. So let's do that. We're going to click on activate payments. And then it's going to ask you a bunch of information about your business. It's really self-explanatory and easy to go through this. They're just going to ask you a bunch of questions. And then we can review all of our personal information and continue to the end. All right, guys. And after you click on submit, now you'll be able to enter into test mode or remove test mode whenever you want. So basically what this means is when it's in test mode, I can basically fill out any payment I want and none of it is actually going to go through and get charged. So nothing is going to get charged to my account or anything like that. Whenever I remove test mode, now payments are live and I can actually start receiving money. So we're going to go into test mode so that we can hook this up to our website and test it to make sure it works before we take off test mode. And it's really easy to do. So now that we're in test mode, make sure it's enabled. Go back to your website. Oh, we're going to close out of that. Go back to your website. And make sure you click on test right here. So there's live and test. And so if you're in test mode over here, you need to make sure you're in test mode over here. All right. And so we're going to go to the developer tab and go over to API keys. And you'll notice it's got a publishable key right here. So we're going to click to copy. And then we're going to paste it right here, publishable key. And then we're going to go back to that tab and get our secret key. And then we're going to click to copy it. And we're going to paste it right here. OK. And now the last thing we need is the webhook. And the webhook is really easy to get. All we have to do is make sure that we copy this endpoint right here, which is provided to you. So controller command C. Go back to our developer tab, and we're going to go to webhooks. And now we can add an endpoint. So let's click on add endpoint. And it's going to ask for the URL that we just copied. So let's paste it. Oh, first we have to select the event. So click on add events, and then we have to go to charge right here. And you want to select all of the charge events. So it's going to have all of this coding here. We're going to click on Add Events. And then right here, Add Endpoint. Perfect. And the reason that you select all charging events is so that you can actually charge people in every way possible on your website. So that's what we're doing here. So now we're waiting for all of those to be set up. All right. And so while we're waiting for the events, we can come up here and copy this, which is our webhook secret. And we can paste it right here. 
All right, and then when you're done, you can click on Save Test Keys right here. Okay, perfect. So now that we've set up Stripe and it's integrated with the website, we can go ahead and title what this is gonna be. And this is actually what the client is gonna see. So I don't know why they put Stripe right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, just so it says credit card. And then description, we can say pay with your credit card via Stripe, that's fine. All right, and we'll leave test mode enabled. After you're done, we can click on save changes right here. And let's go ahead and open up the store because I want to show you guys that now credit card is enabled. And let's go down to simple product for $100, add to cart, view the cart, and then I'm going to remove the downloadable product. And so now I've got my simple product and I can proceed to checkout. All right, and then now if we scroll on down, you'll see that we have credit card available and it's going to give this little temporary message right here, as you can see, but normally it's going to say credit card and then it asks for your card information right here. So that's pretty sweet. But this is letting us know that if we use this fake credit card number, we can actually fill out a complete order. And so you can just take this card number right here, control C and then command V right here. And then you put in whatever expiration date and whatever CVC you want, it doesn't even matter. And basically it's gonna place a fake order on your website that you don't have to pay for. Um, now obviously an order will not even be fulfilled. It's all test mode, it's all fake. Uh, it's just to test your website. And so if you want, you guys can go through it, but I'm not going to do it now. Uh, that's done. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to close out of the checkout page and go back to my dashboard. Now that we've done test mode and you've tested your website, we're going to go over here and turn off test mode so that it's live for customers to actually start paying. So when you already built everything and everything's ready to go, we can take it out of test mode. And the way that we do that is we go turn off test mode. And then we go right back to API keys and we're going to do the exact same thing. The publishable, the secret, and the webhook. It's that simple. So we get the API key and we copy it. All right. And then we're going to disable test mode just like this. And we'll say edit our account keys. And so now instead of test mode, we're in live mode. So now we're going to publish the live stuff here. And we are not in test mode. So we're live here as well. So we're going to copy it, paste it. We'll get our secret key. We'll copy it and we'll paste it. Okay, and so the last thing is the webhook secret. So we'll go over here and to do this again, so first of all, we gotta copy this guy. All right, and then we have to go back over here and we'll go to webhooks and we have to add an endpoint. And so we can paste the endpoint URL right here. So controller command V just like this. And we have to select an event and we're gonna use charge. So select all charge events add, and then we can say add endpoint. Okay, perfect. And now that that's printing, we're gonna copy our ID webhook right here, and we'll put it right here. Perfect, and so now your card, your credit card function on your website is live, it's no longer in test mode. So that's how you can switch between test mode and not. You can enable the test mode here, and then you'll also wanna make sure you log into your Stripe account and make sure that it's in test mode over here. So you have to do it twice, right? And so let's disable test mode, scroll down to the bottom, save changes. Okay, so now our website can receive credit card, so that's great. Let's go ahead and set up PayPal. So we no longer have to have access to our Stripe account, so you can close out of this tab right here. And then from here, we're going to go back to the payments tab. Okay, so now we have Stripe enabled on our website, as you can see. So let's scroll to the very bottom and enable PayPal. And don't worry, PayPal is way easier to set up. All you have to do is click on this button right here to toggle it. And then it's going to ask you to activate PayPal. And so you're going to activate it. And all you have to do is log in to your PayPal account. That's it. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, guys. So once you fill out all of your PayPal information and you log into your account like that, it's basically going to have you put back to this page here. And you don't really have to make any other changes to any of this down below. The only thing you want to do is go up to the top and say, enable the PayPal gateway. That's it. Just check that box right there. Scroll down to the very bottom and hit save changes. Okay, so now we're going to go over to your website and open it up on a new tab. And then we'll go over to the cart and we'll say check out. All right, and then we'll scroll on down here. And after you click on PayPal, you'll be able to click on this blue, uh, the blue and yellow button down here. And then the second that you see it open PayPal just like this, you know that it's working. And so you are good to go. And so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this because that way, uh, anytime they click on this button, it's basically going to link them to their account and then it'll pay you through PayPal. All right. 
So now that that's done, I'm going to close out of this tab and go back to my WordPress dashboard. All right, guys, now you're able to receive payments on your website. Everything's set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and move on to step number nine, which is to set up coupon codes. So maybe you want to start running some sales on your website as different holidays come up or something like that. Or maybe you just want to put a sale out there just in general or give a coupon code to a friend. Whatever you want, we can do that. So we're going to go over here to the WooCommerce tab. We're going to hover over it, go down to coupons right here, and I'm going to open it up on a new tab. Okay, perfect. And so just like every other tab on WordPress, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. There isn't an add new button up here yet because we have to use this little purple button. And of course, after we create the first one, that will disappear and we'll always have to click on add coupon up top. Oh, there it is. I just noticed it. Okay, so either button works. You click on this one or you click on that one. It's just to add a coupon. So let's create the first one. All right, and so just like setting up a product, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna have a title up here and then we've got a couple settings down below and that's pretty much it. So let's set up the first coupon and it's gonna be 20% off of any order. All right, 20% off is what I'm gonna call it. And then we can go down here to the description, which is optional, but you can basically say that this will get you 20% off of any order, right? We can put a period there. So now we're gonna come down to the discount type. And so when we click on this drop down, we'll see three different types. We've got percentage discount, which is what we're doing right now, a percentage off of the cart, right? We've got a fixed cart discount. So this is a discount that applies to the entire cart and then a fixed product discount. And so this is something that just applies to a specific product, right? So of the three, we're gonna select the percentage discount first. Next is the coupon amount. And so we're gonna say this is a 20% off. So we're gonna type in 20 right here. And if you hover over this little icon, it's the value of the coupon. So uh, it's already in percentages. So don't put like 0 0.02. You want to make sure you put 20 for 20%. The next one is if you want to allow free shipping with this coupon. But the next coupon we build, I'm going to make a free shipping coupon, right? So we'll do that one next. And then the last one is the coupon expiration date. And so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just click here and you can have it expire whenever you want. So I'll just choose for this coupon to expire by the end of the month. And that's it right there. And we're good to go. So next we'll go over to the usage restriction and usage restriction is things like the minimum and maximum spend or which products and which products to include or not include. The minimum spend is like maybe this is 20% off orders, you know, over $100, right? So if this was 20% off orders over $100, then my minimum spend would be $100 because that means that this coupon is not allowed to be applied until they have a minimum of $100 in their cart. Same thing applies here, maximum spend. Um, I'm not sure what you would use a maximum spend for, but if you say, hey, if you spend a maximum of $500, if you spend more than that, this coupon doesn't apply. So that's the minimum and maximum here. But I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this because uh, it's just 20% off of any order. Next, we have individual use only. I would make sure you check this box. So check this box if the coupon can't be used in conjunction with other coupons. And this is important. If you've got a 20% off coupon and they find five different coupons, they might be able to start getting free product from your website. And so you want to say that if you're using this coupon, you're not allowed to use other coupon codes. You only get the one. And so that's when you can use the uh, individual use only. Now on the next one, when we create a free shipping coupon, you might not have to check this box because they can still have free shipping and then still get 20% off if another coupon code allows that. So it's completely up to you whether or not you want this to be an individual use only, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this checked. Next, we've got exclude sale items. And so we can basically say that you're not allowed to use this coupon on anything that's actually on sale because I've already decreased the price. So if we were to open up our store, I believe one of the products we have is on sale. Here we go. So the variable product is on sale. It says $35, but it's down to $30. And so it's got this little sale icon. So basically, if I were to add every product on my store to my cart, this coupon would apply to everything except for this $30. It wouldn't take 20% off of this $30. Like it wouldn't take it into account. So that's pretty cool. So you can exclude anything that's on sale if you want to. Next, we have products and excluding products. So we can say that I only want this 20% off to work on one product or two products or three, however many you want. So let's say the, the simple product. So now this is only going to be applied to the simple product, right? So now it's not a 20% off any order. I would have to say 20% off simple product. And you can type as many as you want here and you can keep going. I'm going to click on the X button here. This is to exclude products. And so it's kind of the same thing as excluding sale items, but instead you're just excluding a specific product. So you could say this is 20% off of any order except for the simple product. And so now if they have like six products in their cart and one of them is the simple product, this one will still be full price, but they still get the 20% off of everything else in their cart.
So I'm going to close out of that one there. So it's just different ways of, of filtering out which products are being applied to this coupon. The last thing we have here is usage limits. And usage limits is basically how many times you can use the coupon or how many times one person can use it because maybe they, they use it multiple times or something like that. And so we've got the usage limit per coupon. And so this is basically how many times just in general can this coupon be used? So one customer uses it and then another customer uses it and then so on and so on. And after 50 people use it, this coupon expires and now it's no longer viable. And so now after 50 times of anyone using it, whether they duplicate it or if one person uses all 50 of them or 50 people use it, it doesn't matter. The website keeps track. And if it, use, if it gets used <laughs> 50 times, it's done. So that's the usage limit per coupon. Now we've got the limit of usage to X items. And so maybe you only want it to be able to be applied to like the top five items in someone's cart. And then if they have more than five items, it won't apply to the rest. So you can do that here. And then the last one is usage limit per user. I can say, nope, only one person can use one coupon at a time, right? And so that limits it to one use per customer. Okay, so I'm going to remove that one as well. So now that we have this, 20% off, that is the actual title that someone has to type in, right? So 20% off. So let's go ahead and publish this coupon. And then we'll go over to our store. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the simple product to my cart. So now you'll see that I've got a product for $100. I'm going to go over here to the coupon code and type in 20% off, just like this. And then I hit apply coupon. Perfect. Now you'll see that I've got my 20% off coupon and it has applied. So now it's $20 off from $100. I made it $100 on purpose to make it easy for you guys to see. But it takes off 20% and so now we're down to $80. Okay, so that is the 20% off coupon. Let's go create another one. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and clear out of this. I'm going to remove this one first. And let's just go ahead and leave this in our cart. We're going to go up here to edit coupon and I'm going to say add new. All right, and this time it's going to be $20 off any order that's over $100 or more. $20 off, and that looks funny. It looks like, you know, the number two, oof, but whatever. Okay, so then under the description, I could say something like, so this coupon gives you $20 off any order that's over $100. And so you guys know the drill. We're going to go down here to discount type, and this time we're going to do fixed cart discount as well. You'll rarely do like a fixed product discount unless you actually have a specific product like the simple product that you uh, want to do a discount on. So fixed cart discount, and we're going to say $20 off, right? And so whenever it's a percent discount, if I were to put 20, it would be 20% off. But if I choose fixed cart discount, then when I put a 20 here, it's going to be $20 off. Okay, does that make sense? So this right here changes it between a percentage and a dollar amount. So that means $20 is being taken off as the coupon amount. And then if you want, you can allow free shipping as well because maybe, you know, they're spending $100, you give them free shipping, it's up to you. And then let's set the coupon expiration date to be the end of the month. And then this is where we're actually going to use the minimum spend and we'll say you have to spend $100 or more for this to apply, right? And then we can scroll on down here and you guys can add whatever products you want if you want to or anything like that. I'm going to say that this is also individual use only. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna go over here to the right-hand side and click on Publish, and let's go take a look. We're gonna go over to our cart, and you'll notice that $100 right here, that means that we're at our minimum spend. So if I go to the coupon code and I say $20 off, perfect, it is $20 right here removed from our order. But let's say instead of the simple product, I remove this one, and I'll go back to the store, so let's return, and let's choose something that's not $100. Let's go over here to the ebook, or the downloadable, right? Click add to cart. And then from here, we'll do the $20 off. All right, and there you go. It's gonna block the user and it's gonna say that the minimum spend for this coupon is $100. So then they'll be like, oh, okay, I just have to spend a little bit more money. So we'll go back to the shop and maybe I will add a whole simple product or I could add a couple of the simple threes or something like that, but we'll just add $100 right here. Now we're gonna view the cart and now we can apply the coupon. Perfect, and just like that, it's gonna work. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna click on remove. And let's create one more coupon. Let's go ahead and click on add coupon because we're going to create a free shipping coupon this time. So we'll call it free shipping, just like this. And this code gives you free shipping on any order or your order, whatever. Okay. So now under the general tab, we've got the three different types. It's not a percentage and it's not a specific product. I want this to be applied to the entire order or the cart, right? So I'm going to choose fixed cart discount because I want free shipping to be over all the products in the cart, not just one product, right? 
and then I'm going to go over here to coupon amount. I'm going to leave it at zero because I'm not taking any kind of amount off of the cart. All I want to do is allow free shipping. And so I'm just going to check this box right here. That's the only thing I'm doing, right? And then I can come over here to usage restriction and I could say maybe it's free shipping on any order over like $100. And so then I would have to say my minimum spend is $100, right? And then I can go down here. You guys know the rest all over here. And then we've got our usage limits as well. And so this is just usage limit per coupon. Maybe I only want people to use it. Oh, well, first of all, remember the individual use only. If you want to check this one, you can. But for free shipping, I'm going to say that you can actually use this in conjunction with other coupons. I'm okay with that. But then the usage limits. So let's just say 50 times. This can only be used in total 50 times by anybody. And then maybe limit per user. I'll say this can only be used once per person, right? So let's click on publish to save our work. And it's also going to make it live. Now, I didn't set an expiration date on this coupon, so actually, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll just say that it expires by the end of the month right here. And so let's click on Update. And so as you can see, you can make changes to whatever coupon you want. You can even extend the date just by coming in here and editing it, and then you can just extend the date here. So now that that's done, we can go over here to the cart. And so you'll notice that we don't have our shipping set up. That's actually the next step. But if we go over here and we apply free shipping, and we hit Apply Coupon, perfect. It says free shipping coupon has been applied. Uh, it's called free shipping, obviously, and it would remove the shipping cost if we had a shipping cost in there. But don't worry, guys, we're going to get to that. It's the next step. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm going to click on remove, and let's create one more coupon. We're going to go up here to edit coupon, and I'm going to say add new. Let's go ahead and click on add coupon because we're going to create a free shipping coupon this time. So we'll call it free shipping, just like this. And this code gives you free shipping on any order or your order, whatever. Okay. So now under the general tab, we've got the three different types. It's not a percentage and it's not a specific product. I want this to be applied to the entire order or the cart, right? So I'm going to choose fixed cart discount because I want free shipping to be over all the products in the cart, not just one product, right? And then I'm going to go over here to coupon amount. I'm going to leave it at zero because I'm not taking any kind of amount off of the cart. All I want to do is allow free shipping. And so I'm just going to check this box right here. That's the only thing I'm doing, right? And then I can come over here to usage restriction. And I could say maybe it's free shipping on any order over like $100. And so then I would have to say my minimum spend is $100, right? And then I can go down here. You guys know the rest all over here. And then we've got our usage limits as well. And so this is just usage limit per coupon. Maybe I only want people to use it. Oh, well, first of all, remember the individual use only. If you want to check this one, you can. But for free shipping, I'm going to say that you can actually use this in conjunction with other coupons. I'm okay with that. But then the usage limits. So let's just say 50 times. This can only be used in total 50 times by anybody. And then maybe limit per user. I'll say this can only be used once per person, right? So let's click on publish to save our work. And it's also going to make it live. Now, I didn't set an expiration date on this coupon, so actually, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll just say that it expires by the end of the month right here. And so let's click on Update. And so as you can see, you can make changes to whatever coupon you want. You can even extend the date just by coming in here and editing it, and then you can just extend the date here. So now that that's done, we can go over here to the cart. And so you'll notice that we don't have our shipping set up. That's actually the next step. But if we go over here and we apply free shipping, and we hit Apply Coupon, perfect. It says free shipping coupon has been applied. Uh, it's called free shipping, obviously, and it would remove the shipping cost if we had a shipping cost in there. But don't worry, guys, we're going to get to that. It's the next step. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm going to click on remove. And so that is how you can create some basic product uh, coupons. So you guys can get pretty creative and create whatever kind of coupons you want. But with that, we're going to go back to the WordPress dashboard, and I'll just close out of that tab. Okay, so now it's time to move on to step number 10, which is to set up your shipping methods. And the reason I want to do our shipping methods next is because we just did a free shipping coupon, and so I want to be able to show you guys that it actually applies. And so when we're done setting up our shipping methods, we'll go back and just double check that that free shipping coupon actually works, which it does, but we're going to do it anyways just for your viewing pleasure. So in order to edit your shipping methods, we're going to go over to WooCommerce, and we'll drop down to the Settings tab right here. I'm opening it on a new tab. And then we're going to click on the shipping tab right here. Okay, so now we can scroll on down and you know the drill. We've got the purple add shipping zone or add shipping zone right here. Both of them do the exact same thing. So I'm going to click on the big one because I want to. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to title this United States. Okay, and then the zone I would actually select as the United States. So I've got to search it. 
So United States right here. And notice as well, you can do individual states. So you don't just have to do a United States as a whole. You could say, okay, for Texas, because I'm in Texas, orders are going to be $10. But for every other state in the United States, it'll be $20 or something like that if you want to. I'll let you guys play around with this as you want. I'm just going to select United States in general because I just want to show you guys how this works. You guys can, of course, customize this to your business as you need. So we've called it United States, and then we actually selected the United States as our zone, right? Now we can come down to shipping methods, and we have to add a new shipping method. And so a shipping method could be, you know, flat rate, and then maybe one is uh, free shipping, one is express, or something like that. So we'll say add a shipping method right here. And as you can see, we've got three different types. We've got flat rate, free shipping, and local pickup. And local pickup is pretty self-explanatory. They're just going to pick it up from your local shop address. And so I'm going to skip over this one. I'm going to show you guys how to do a flat rate and then also free shipping. So let's do flat rate first and click on add. And now that we've added it, we can go back and actually edit it. So let's click on edit right here. And so you'll see right here the method title is called flat rate. You guys could call this whatever you want. Maybe you want to call this like standard shipping. You can choose whether or not it's taxable. And so I'm just going to say no, it's not taxable. And then you basically get to say for anywhere in the United States, how much is the shipping going to cost so that you can add it to every order automatically. And so I'm going to say $10 just for the example. So let's click on save changes. All right. So now we have our standard shipping set up. So whenever they buy a product, anywhere they ship it into the United States, it's going to be $10. Let's also add a free shipping method as well. So I'm gonna say add a shipping method. This time we're gonna choose free shipping. Then I'm gonna come over and click on edit. And so now we've got the title, free shipping. And so we can totally do that. I'm just gonna leave it as free shipping because that's obviously what it is. And now we get the requirement. So I'm gonna choose a minimum order amount. You guys can do a whole bunch of these if you want, but I'm gonna say minimum order amount. I'm gonna say Anytime someone spends, let's just say $200 or more on my website. So $200 or more on my website, you get free shipping, no matter what, on the entire order. Now, the next checkbox right here is actually pretty important. We've got the coupon discount. And so it's saying, do you want to apply the minimum order value rule, which is this one right here, so the $200 rule. Do you want to apply that rule before a coupon discount or after? And so if you check this box, you're doing it before. And if you uncheck the box, you're doing it after. I would recommend leaving this checkbox unchecked because you're basically saying that as long as the order is $200 or more, they get free shipping. So what if maybe they have a discount like $20 off or $30 off or something like that? And so I have this checkbox applied. And so they get up to $200 and they get free shipping, but then they apply a coupon where they get, you know, $50 off or something like that. Now their minimum order amount is not $200, but because I have this box checked, they would still get free shipping even though they're not spending $200. Does that make sense? And so I want to make sure that this rule is applied after the coupon. So after they take off those $50, nope, you don't get free shipping anymore. You have to spend an additional $50 to get back up to the $200. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and save the changes. So we'll go over here and I'll just add one more simple product. All right. And then I'm going to go back to my cart. And now you'll notice I have $275 if I go to checkout. And now we can scroll on down. We've got two different options. We've got standard shipping and free shipping. So they can choose this one because they're spending more than $200. And now it took off the $10. You see that? So that's how you can set up different shipping methods on your website. And I'm sure that you can see it from the cart too. Let's check. I'm going to click on the cart. Yeah, here we go. Shipping methods. You've got standard for $10 or free shipping because you have more than $200. All right. So now that we're done with the shipping methods, I'm going to go ahead and close out of both of these tabs and go back to the dashboard because it's time to move on to step number 11, which is to manage your orders. Now, in order to manage orders, I'm going to have to actually place an order on our website so that I have something to actually manage for you guys. So let's go ahead and place an order on our own website. All right, so now we have the checkout confirmation screen. So we've got, thank you, your order has been received. They have their order number, their, the date. It's been sent to their email, the total, which is the $100 plus the $10 shipping here. And then they've got the breakdown here, as well as their address and billing information. And so obviously all this is just fake and terrible, but you guys get the idea. This is what the confirmation screen will look like when someone places an order on your website. So now WooCommerce is automatically going to send a processing email to the customer. So let's go ahead and check that out right now. I'm going to open up my Gmail on a new tab. 
And right here, as you can see, I've got your Levi's products because <laughs> it's from me because obviously this email is also the admin email. Otherwise, it would say Levi's products right here. But we can click on this guy and now you'll see it right here. Hi, thank you for your order. Your order is being processed right now, right? And so that means that whoever is running the website is has your order and is processing it. So that means they're in the process of getting ready. They're going to ship out everything. And then when they do, they'll let you know, right? And so that means that it's our job to go and process this order. So I want to show you guys the front end and the back end, right? So this is what the client sees. We'll go ahead and close out of this email. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. I'm going to close out of this tab, go to WooCommerce, and now you'll see, hey, I've got an order. So let's go ahead and pay attention to it. All right, so down below, you'll see a list of all of your orders. And so you can see that it's in processing. That's the status. $110 was placed two minutes ago, and it was placed by Levi H., which is obviously me, but it's going to display their name as well as the order number. So that's pretty cool. We're going to click on the order to open it up. You're going to see all of their information. So we've got their shipping information because when they put in their address, this is where you're shipping it to. And then it asks, hey, is your billing address the same as your shipping address? And I don't remember if I said yes or no, but it looks like I put in something else. So now it's got the billing address, the shipping address, which obviously all of it is just uh, fake and terrible, but you guys get the idea. That's what's going to show up. And so this is where you'll know where to send the, the, the product to. So if it's a digital or downloadable product, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is go over here to the status and then you would say completed right here, right? But this is a physical product. So you're gonna actually have to send the product to this address. And so you would come over here, you'd get the address right here, you'd go create your packing, your shipping label, put it on the box and send it to them. And so once you've created your shipping label and you're sending the product to them, also down below, you've got a list of everything they bought. So you don't have to go and find out. It's right here, everything for you. You've got the address and what they ordered. So you put this in the box, send it to this address, you're good to go. Over here under the status tab, we would change it over to completed. Oops, not on hold. We'll say completed. And then from here, all we have to do is click on update. And it's automatically going to send a completed email to your client, just like that. So now that we've done that, and it says completed, and we've sent the, uh, the package to them, we can go over to our inbox. And now we've got another email. And it says, hey, thanks for shopping with us. We have finished processing your order. And then here's all of your order information, the shipping address, and everything. And so now we know that our email system is working. And that's great. So now we know the emails are working. Everything is automatically being sent to the client as you make live changes on your website, right? So as you're making adjustments to the order, if I were to change this to refunded because they asked for a refund, I would basically change it to refund, hit update, and then they would get an email saying, hey, your order has been refunded. We're in the process of it, yada, yada, yada. You guys get the idea. So that is how managing orders works on WordPress. Now from here, we can go back to the WordPress dashboard and we can just take a look at our website and see what we've made. We've got these really cool images in the background. I love how it's like a slideshow rather than just being a stagnant image here. Uh, scrolling down, we've got our featured products, which remember this was a category that we created. And so we can put whatever products we want to into that category and it'll automatically populate on the front page of our website. And then we've got these cool promotional sections, which you guys would put in which product this is with all the information and so on and so on. And then as we scroll down a little bit further, we can have why choose Levi's products. And so from here, you guys would put in all of your personal information. And then we've got a new arrival section as well. And then down below, like a video section. So maybe you've got a YouTube channel paired with this or some, some social media. You guys could always put your Instagram in here or something like that. And then one last promotional section as well. I think this site looks fantastic. One more look at the shop page. Let's do it right now. This page looks great. We've got our sidebar over here on the right-hand side. They can filter by price. They can search for products because we've entered in all of the tags for each individual product. We've got our categories as well. Recently viewed products, which won't pop up obviously if this is their first time, but still really cool. And then if we go to our individual product pages as well, Everything is neatly displayed. I mean, this thing just looks almost like Amazon. We've got our products with our images here. We've got our express checkout buttons, so we can use PayPal or Venmo if we want to, and so that's a cool feature when you uh, download the PayPal WooCommerce integration plugin that we downloaded. And so this is our website. I think it looks great. And you're done. You have a fully functioning, working e-commerce website at your fingertips using WooCommerce plugin. And so from here, people can go over to your shop page and they can buy whatever they want. You can manage the orders. You guys know how to work the entire website because you literally built it. This is incredible. 
If you haven't already claimed your free custom domain name and premium hosting plan, go ahead and click on the link in the top left corner. And if you want to learn about a few other ways of making money online, click on the video in the top right corner. I'll see you there.